what's up what's up everyone happy sunday november 13th as you can see this is our atlanta season four episode 10 finale it was all a dream ladies and gentlemen all a dream this whole time or was it well we're gonna find out by the end of this discussion but what's up to everyone uh this is uh elliot here from movie files uh it is uh Bittersweet, y'all. We we we've uh, we've had four seasons of of this incredible show, and it has all come to an end, or has it? We'll talk about that too. But listen, y'all. Before we get into today's discussion, I want to take the time to thank you all for joining us today on Sunday. I got my guests in the back room. I got a couple other people joining us today. Uh, but I wanted to just start off by saying. Thank you all for the, the support on these videos, man, not only on the breakdowns, but of course, these live Sunday discussions. Uh, you know, the guests I'm going to have on are are covering the show as well, and they do a fantastic job. So I can't thank them to uh, thank them enough for continuing to, 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 to push the conversation to get this show out there more, because I know it's lost a little bit of momentum the last few years. But uh, I want to thank the creators that's been covering this. Thank you all for, for supporting these videos and uh, more, you know, more or less, too, thanking the creators for bringing us Atlanta for these last last four years man it's well more than four years four seasons i should say but the show's uh was 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 my favorite man and i'm gonna miss it but hey we got this discussion to talk about and we'll get into all the favorite moments favorite characters and all our uh great discussion that we'll have for you all but hey with all that being said like share leave your thoughts in live chat and more importantly um support these creators that i'm gonna bring on to today's stream but with all that let me bring in my first guest 
who's in the back room, who's been killing it uh, with this past week. I know he's been super busy with his live streams, live discussions for a pretty big film this week. And I know he has this show he's going to have later today. So this man's constantly busy. So I say I'd like to say this. I appreciate him joining us today because I know he has a million things going on. And it means a lot that he's here talking about Atlanta. I'm talking about my man, one and only Brandon from Just My P Reviews. What's up, man? Hello, 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 sir. How you doing, man? How you doing? doing good bro how, how's the uh how how's the mental space man i know you've been covering some some stuff these last few days and been killing it bro how you doing is the question. I, I, i'm doing pretty good and hello everybody out there in the chat uh but your boy is exhausted in a good way you know yeah it's, it's a good exhaustion it's a fun exhaustion and uh um, you know I'm, I'm running on fumes but at the same time I'm, I'm still going you know there's so much to unpack uh, in this final episode of Atlanta, you know, it's so much. I haven't even had time to do my own recap because I'm just trying to Busy. still up stuff, you know, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good, man. It's been a good weekend, a good week. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm loving all these collabs and, and breakdowns that everybody's doing. It's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Yes, sir. Well, listen, guys, this isn't the first time Brandon's been on the channel. It definitely won't be the last. Uh, but just in case this is your first time watching one of our, our discussions and whatnot, hey, B, why don't you let them know who you are and where they can find your content, man? Yes, sir. And thank you so much for having me, man. I, I do appreciate it. But if you don't know, I'm B. Avery, Brandon Keith Avery with Just My Opinion Reviews. You can follow me on social media. My handle's on the screen. And if you do decide to follow me, you'll get, you know, movie reviews. But not only movie reviews, you'll get spoiler movie reviews. You'll also get like a weekly movie news roundup show. <clears throat> and just me talking about and breaking down popular television shows that are streaming on all these platforms like a She-Hulk like in atlanta like a love is blind season three or whatever i'm most likely going to be covering in some type of capacity also do trailer reactions and if i'm lucky i may interview somebody some famous person but if that's your type of thing come on over subscribe to the channel i would love to engage with you in the chat in the comment section in healthy dialogue Yes, sir, man. And yeah, B, as as we kind of alluded to the Black Panther discussion, man, it's definitely been uh, something interesting in the last few days. So, guys, he has not only a trailer uh, or out of the theater reaction, a spoiler free review, spoiler discussions that I was able to be a part of. Uh, he did one with uh, one of his homeboys, did one with Kimberly yesterday. So, I mean, the man and plus doing other, you know, trailer reactions and hosting the show. He's been a very busy man. So, again, B, I appreciate you being here with us today, man. Thank you. And I, I may do one more. I may do a part four, but we'll see. Part four. We'll see. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm, I'm ready for that, man. But hey, we got some other guests in the back room I'm going to bring in. And I mentioned earlier, uh, not only myself and Brandon and um, a, a lot of other great content creators on YouTube that's covering this show, but we got another special guest in the back room who has, who has been killing it with the breakdowns man i, I love uh, the, the the channel that he's been growing the uh the discussions that he brings to the table the easter eggs the what you've missed what it could have meant this man here was on the the channel a few weeks ago and I, I had to hit him up to bring him back for this finale i'm talking about my man nine nerd yards what's happening man are you muted or am i muted oh oh there he is there he is what's there up y'all i'm sorry what's i'm late on, my man no uh, worries. Hey, I was running late, brother. How you doing to today? Take my uh, pink Maserati into the shop, you know. Of course, of course. <laughs> it was, uh, <laughs> getting some wear and tear, but thanks for having me on, guys. Of really course, appreciate man. it. And um, yeah, I'm actually on that hashtag. Judy is thick. Oh yeah. I see that Judy right thick yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll get into this. <laughs> nah, man, it's so good to see you back, man. It's so excited to have you on and talk about this episode and and have all our fun discussions. But before we uh, introduce our other guests and get to today's topics, why don't you introduce yourself just in case people don't know who you are, my friend? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm Nine Nerd Yards. You can find me on YouTube. I do Atlanta breakdowns um, and I'm running quite behind on them. So you may see me. Um, uploading a lot more on my channel and if you want to hit me up you can follow me on twitter instagram and i also have a great community on discord and we're still talking about atlanta over there too so yeah listen uh, man we'll we probably need... be in the description yes definitely man we we we're waiting for those reviews we know they're coming man we know that they gotta they gotta be cooked well like the marcus's sushi shop so we know they're coming man and, and when they are we don't support yeah, them yeah, and yeah, like yeah. them and share so i can't wait for them so they may be a little hotter than room temperature but you there know. you go bro you know 
and doing it and rolling it with uh with no gloves. Yeah, so so uh, yeah, shout out to I'm Nine man. His, his links will definitely be in the description. But we got another guest that joined us a few weeks ago and has been here ever since. And I'm so glad to have him back to talk about this finale. Get his thoughts on this was a dream. If it was real, if Judge Judy is thick, my man Tyree and joining us again. What's up, brother? What's going on? Amen. Back again. I can't believe this is the end. Like literally, I thought like when this episode was airing, I thought of every type of goodbye song I could think of, or every type of farewell <laughs> song popped into my head with this episode. And I was like, this is crazy. You know, when you get attached to something, you know, you don't want to let it go, especially yeah. if it's that good. Yeah. And this is definitely one of those shows that you know you wish it could go on forever, but you know everybody has to move on, has to do yeah. other things, and the cast you know, is, has a bunch of different other things going on. So maybe they can't be held into doing this, which is probably why I believe they probably pushed out this season instead of waiting to release it next year. Right. Which I'm glad they did Um, at the end of the day. But it's definitely going to be a missed series for yeah. sure. It's definitely going to be one of those shows. And you look back years from now, it's like, wow, why didn't this show get the kind of praise that it did then? It's probably going to yeah. be one of the people that come around late later and say, wow, this show was phenomenal. We'll see, man. We'll see what time give us. And hey, it might be another little spinoff or maybe a, a, a one-off or a movie. We'll see, man. But Tyrion, why don't you, uh, you know, you joined us last few weeks. And uh, if, just in case people are tuning in for the first time, why don't you introduce yourself and let them know where they can find your content, man. All right, mom. My name is Torian Rain Reloaded. I have a YouTube okay. channel, Torian Rain Reloaded. You can find, follow me on here. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter at Torian Rain Reloaded, as well as Instagram at Torian underscore Rain. I do three videos a day, um, Monday through Friday. Friday, I do two and a live stream. And on Saturday and Sunday, I do one video at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm just kind of curious because I know we talked about it briefly last week. And I know Brandon's uh, thoughts on the film, but I'm just curious, starting with you now. Did you get a chance to see uh, Black Panther recently over the weekend? I did. I did. Uh, I went I on filming. Thursday. And yeah. I mean... I, I, I'm I'm going to drop a review or probably do like a live discussion, but okay, I okay. mean, it, it's I'm right here. Okay. It hit all the spots for me. Um, I had a little bit of uh, uh, some complaints on some things, but uh, yeah. I think overall, good stuff. Good stuff. Everyone should go watch that thing. Hey, I'm excited for that live, bro. Uh, it's Irene, man. Did you get a chance to check out Mr. Uh, the, the, the Marvel's Black Panther? Yeah, I saw it on, on Thursday. I saw it with two different groups. I saw one group on Thursday, then I saw it with another group uh last night. Okay. Um, I had you know, it was a it was like a roller coaster ride for me. Like it had a high, its high moments and it had its low moments as well. Then I had to like really sit there and think and contemplate like what Ryan Coogler had to deal with with such, you know, at such with uh such a limited amount of time considering a real world, a real issue just happened to occur with the you know star of his movie and having to rework it and then learning about what he originally had planned as far as the script and the story goes and then that right. would have been very interesting to see but you know unforeseen uh circumstances but like i said it wasn't i wouldn't say it wasn't it wasn't bad but it wasn't great either it's like falling right in that middle yeah. area um for me i still hold the first one in very high regard for me like that's Dang. what i said Dang, in my man. review i hold the, the first one up here like that's a standard mm. uh uh to me but after watching the movie a second time i have a theory of what they could possibly do with the third film and if executed properly this thing might actually rival possibly in game mm. okay and well, I know, and I know, and I know, and I know Brandon did like a marathon of, hey, of my reviews. Man was, like every time coming. something came up in my in my notifications, it said yeah. just it said just my uh just my opinion reviews. Yes, Black Panther, non-spoiler, then another one. <laughs> just my opinion. Then another one. Black <laughs> Panther, spoiler, part two. Killing just my it, opinion. Man. <laughs> it's like it was like you was doing a marathon, and now you're talking about possibly doing another one. <laughs> <laughs> and that's but hey, a b but hey b. but hey it attached it, a is content and it's yes. attaching itself to um the algorithm and what but, was so impressive too is he had you know obviously he had a couple different streams but he had different people on different perspectives so that was that was really dope yeah thank you guys. i was going to give i was going to uh give my i was going to give my uh theory but then i saw someone in the comments said please don't put any spoilers so i can't give my theory on the stream Understood, understood but but yeah but trust me i think that i don't know if anyone else had the same theory as me 
but you know what? I'll, I'll just save it for afterwards. Okay. We'll, we'll 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 talk afterwards for sure. Get your thoughts on that. And Brandon, we got another guest in the back room. I'm gonna bring in here in a second. But Brandon, I mean, I know you've been talking about it at a, you know nauseum, and you're gonna have another stream. But any any brief thoughts after four streams, seeing it a couple different times? <laughs> how are you feeling about it on this Sunday? Is it still where it was? The other hey, day? It, you know, it, it, it's still a positive rating. You know, yeah. I'm I'm still ironclad stuck with my six point five out of ten. You know, gotcha. it was. It was some great things about the movie that I did enjoy. It just didn't reach its full potential, unfortunately. You know, for sure. For and sure, uh, I, and I, it got banned. In, and I'm it sorry? got banned in China. Yeah, it got that's, banned that's a couple. Crazy. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy. Wow. For what? Well, Why did it get banned in China? Because of that I, short I, I, LGBT. We can't. We can't. Is. I was gonna say we can't say it because yeah. someone's gonna say oh. no spoilers. Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah. I won't say that who it was. was. It was an LGBTQ okay. thing, which was so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We saw well, more, basically, uh, I'll put it. I'll put it like this. Late to the I, season. I, I'll, I'll put it yeah. like this. The same thing that the same reason that Eternals got banned in China is the same reason yeah. Black Panther: Wakanda Forever got banned in China. Yep. I'll just Pretty leave much. it there. And, then, and real quick, uh, I may be mistaken, but nah, nah, this may be the first time I've been on with you, man. But uh, oh, my nice apologies, Brandon, uh, Tyreen, this is nine. I think, uh, my uh, man what's going on? We were on uh, for a little bit um, together last stream that I was on, okay. but it okay. may have been so. like a quick so. high and buys. But uh, yeah, uh, maybe I want to get on one of those extended streams with you because I'm getting my thoughts go. together. So yeah, invite me on. That's there you go. Fun. There you go. Well, listen, man, we got uh, the homie in the back room, and I'm so excited to hear her thoughts on this episode. She wasn't able to join us last week, but she was in the <laughs> chat letting us know her thoughts, and uh, very excited to hear her thoughts on this episode. The homie Tyra's in the building, y'all. What's going on, Tyra? Oh, hey, Reviews yo. TV. How we doing? <laughs> oh, I'm good. It's so final. Everybody here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We to come together, man. It's the finale. This is the end of an era, Tyra. It's oh. the end of an era. How you doing today? I'm a little stuffy, but I'm here. I was like, same. I'm not, I'm the same I'm here. not missing this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not missing this. this. This is it. We won't have an opportunity to talk about this together again. So I wasn't missing this. Well, I appreciate you, Tyra. Before we get your thoughts on briefly on, on Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and of course today's episode, why don't you introduce yourself to the people? <laughs> uh, hello, I am Tyra with Struggle With Views TV. B, let, let it go, because y'all know y'all don't want to hear my thoughts. Uh, <laughs> my handle is on the screen. Please feel free to follow me on Instagram. I am really doing my thing on there. I, I just love doing the skits and giving you guys content in any way possible. I do have a paywall up for majority of my content as far as probably mostly throwback content, but I do do more contemporary movies and TV shows. It's a collective of everything, albums. Uh, just come over and check me out and leave a comment and tell me if B or Elliot sent you. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I, I got to ask, Sarah. Um, you know, I know you got a chance to see the film and I know you're probably going to have a, a, probably a breakdown on the channel in the coming days. But just briefly, coming out of the film, I'm referring to Wakanda Forever, uh, which funny enough, this show actually uh, alluded to it in season three. And it's funny how it came out in the same week. But right. how, how did you feel about uh, Black Panther before we get into today's topics? Uh, <laughs> I don't really have anything good to say about it. Uh, it's a nice looking film. Um, yeah, it, it was too much that I didn't like about the film. Like it didn't trump because I was like, oh, like it was. I was making excuses. You know, you try to create something out of nothing, and I shouldn't have to do that. Like the the movie was lacking on many fronts. I did not have a good time. It was nice to look at though. That, that, that's I give about a five. Okay. Now are you gonna have a review for we can get we'll get a full thought on or is this just not the energy? Yeah, I, I keep uh not doing it. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put that out because I don't know why y'all want to hear my opinion because I don't have anything good to say, but I I I think I'm gonna do that. I'm just it's and it's sad because I don't want to talk about it, but you know, when we um uh, when we give bad opinions, those videos always perform so well for oh, some Oh, yeah, the algorithm loves that. <laughs> yeah, I found that my review for this movie was probably one of my most watched movie reviews that I've done since Get Out. Mm. Like that, I found that to be very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Although Get Out, for me, is like really, really good. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Well, speaking of uh, really, really good, uh, thick <laughs> Judy, y'all, we 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 gonna talk about that. And I guess just to jump right into it, B, uh, we got the finale, man. This and we all kind of alluded to it last week based on the the snippets of the trailer that we got that this was gonna be a Darius focused episode. But also, we got our 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 trio doing their own thing. So, just uh, initial impressions, Brandon, on how you felt after watching this episode. 
I I'm I'm on the fence, but at the same time, I still loved it at the same time, you know. And the reason why I just say I'm on the fence is because I don't know how I completely feel about it because I have to watch it at least two more times to pick up everything because I've only seen it twice at this moment. Mm -hmm. uh, like when it when it first came out that night, I was kind of dozing in and out, not saying that it was bad, you know, but I watched it again earlier this morning and I was really enjoying it. Um, there's a character that I miscast and I'm as so embarrassed that I didn't know who it was. And we can talk about it when we get there. Y'all going to lose your crap when y'all when I say who I thought it was. But the, the, the whole Inception vibe was amazing. I love that. One of my favorite movies from Christopher Nolan. Um, I mean, this case here has been through the ring or so beat up. But <laughs> I love this movie. And so, I mean, that's all I was thinking about from the very beginning to the very end you know so for for that reason alone it's dang near a masterpiece but i i had a lot of fun with it yeah the inception vibes were giving me because it's one of my favorite christopher nolan films as well and and we definitely get that type of inception ending nine man your initial impressions after finishing the episode i know you and the crew i normally do the the live uh watch alongs and you guys do the discussion afterwards man how did you how did you feel about it and after seeing it probably a couple more times how you feel about it now it's bittersweet. I actually have not watched it again yet. So gotcha. I'm gotcha. still kind of like going off my first reaction. I got it up right now. I'm um, just kind of like skimming through it. And I think it's just a really great Atlanta episode. I'm kind of on the fence of how I feel uh, about it as a finale. But mm. in terms of just how it uh, tackles, um, you know, it mixes between uh, supporting like black businesses to just like right, the ridiculousness right. of um, not knowing if uh, someone's in a dream, like uh, Brandon said, like that Inception vibe. Um, it's just a fun episode all around, but maybe I wanted a little bit more for the finale. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Tarina, are you feeling the same or feeling a little bit differently about the first impression after watching it for the first time? This was just, like I said, like a Darius type episode like it's almost like one of the things you expect his character to go through mm -hmm. um whenever you are getting something from him what i noticed is that whenever they have episodes that are centered around each character just them like an episode that's just for them they have a certain theme that's for each yeah. character like you wouldn't have darius go through what al goes through you wouldn't have al go what earn goes through you wouldn't have van go through what darius goes through if right. you notice the themes of all their individual episodes, they have something around them that's just centered, just or mm -hmm. catered to just how they would go, what their experience would be. So right. when I'm looking at this episode and seeing what Darius is going through by himself, even though the rest of the crew is there, and he does, but he doesn't link up with them until like the end, as far as like all together. Right. Um, I said this is just something that you would think Darius would go through, and he went through quite a bit in this episode we thought teddy perkins was something yeah this like with this one right here was kind of you know crazy too and it's interesting brandon was bringing up inception because that's one of my favorite movies too like if that movie comes on right now i'm dropping everything and i'm watching it like and, and i always felt like we had those inception type of things vibes even in real life you know with the dreams and whatnot right. so yeah i thought that was you know very interesting it almost gave me groundhog day vibes too mm. like him constantly waking up over and over and repeating it interesting interesting i love it i love it tyra how about did you feel as though this hit the spot as far as finales go um did you like the the mystery box of it being a dream how'd you feel about it i loved it i didn't have a problem with anything yeah. <laughs> i loved it i love them leaving it open and ambiguous i think it fits perfectly into the atlanta universe like it wouldn't be atlanta if they just left us off answering every single question normal and i think it uh kind of gave me like those throwback love it or hate it like i think i saw like sopranos down in the comments or you know saint elsewhere shows mm -hmm. like dallas uh twin peaks just to leave it. remember uh roseanne when they hit the lottery and it was like that it, yep. it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it it leaves it open uh open for discussion like i think it leaves a lot of layers for us to unfold and talk about on and on mm -hmm. you know way beyond the show instead of just answering everything and we're left you know just completely fulfilled with everything i don't think that that would have been atlanta style i love yeah. everything here i didn't have a problem with anything yeah i'm, I'm kind of i said in my breakdown i don't normally like to throw the word uh perfect around but for me this was a perfect finale for this show uh knowing that it is kind of not the traditional uh trajectory of storytelling and how things were surreal we literally had episodes where we didn't have any of our main crew so it just it fit that 
yeah. mold for me. Uh, and plus, on top of it, it gave us everything that Atlanta is also known for. Comedy, <laughs> uh, hilarious moments, outrageous characters like London, uh, emotional moments with Darius and his family. Uh, and then just seeing the crew together and just that that and then ending it the way it did. It's, it, it just hit on so it's many It's layered. Like, I yeah. bet you out of all five of us, everybody walked away with something completely 100%. different. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so kind of getting into the discussion, B, man, we, we opened this episode with uh, again a very kind of almost dreamlike sequence with the slow motion of Darius just sitting in the in the uh kind of that tank position uh as he's watching Al and and Earn talk and just kind of have a discussion as just Judy is playing on the television, which makes you wonder if, if the beginning of the episode was all a dream because it seems like every dream sequence included Judge Judy. So curious be on how you felt about just kind of opening this episode and especially we get a, a call back to episode nine with uh, that that banger of a song of old Mc, um, Alfred with his, mm -hmm. uh, you know, farming outfit and his boot on his foot. Well, yeah, man, um, I love the opening just for the fact that we got to see that they're all together. And, you know, Van popped up a little later on and I was kind of hoping like, oh, we got Darius, we got to earn, you know, we got Al, we got Paperboy. So I was happy with the opening, just hoping that, you know, Van will pop up later, you know, as she did. Yeah, but with the title of the episode, you know, it was all a dream and hit opening like this with him, you know, listening to, you know, his music with his headphones on. You knew something was up, that it was going to be some type of twist. And at this point, I still don't know. At what, I don't know what was real and what's not real. I'm still trying to uh, piece that together. But I like the mystery. And I'm trying to remember what exactly song he was uh, playing at the beginning. The group, they said it. I, it just uh, I, it's just slipping my, my mind right now. But it, it, it was a nice opening just for the sole fact that, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that we was going to see all the, the rest of the characters. Uh, but we're, mm -hmm. they're, all, they're all together. Yeah, yeah, no, one hundred percent. And uh, what was I'm sorry, Tyron. And now, uh, what was the song you guys were uh, they opened it up with? Uh, yeah. It's uh, Liberty. Uh, it's it's slipping wow. my mind because I didn't go straight to Liberty. I'm a Kanye West fan, so I went to lift yourself up. Yeah, <laughs> but it's it's a group. It's it's an old seventies. I can't remember. Yeah, God. and I actually had to be reminded that you know that uh, Kanye sampled that for yeah. that song too. Right. So right, right. right. No, good point. I mean, take thing. it away, Nana. What do you think about this opening, man? We get the the hints of the the um, the the, the uh, Popeye's chicken sandwich on the on the screen. We get the the joke between exactly. uh, Ern and Darius, and I guess or Ern and uh, Al. And again, going back to just Judy being on screen, do you think that this opening was a dream? I I have to say, yeah, because now that you call it out, that he's kind of in that um, position for uh uh that sleep deprivation i mean the mm -hmm. deprivation tank <clears throat> position yeah i, I kind of see that that could be I, I don't know he's saying he's gonna uh re replenishes his mind and soul when he's trying to get other people to do it with him and yeah. i i think i'm on the side that maybe this whole construct is all a dream but then mm -hmm. I have to like kind of apply that to all of the wacky events that exactly. Atlanta yep. has. I mm -hmm. agree. I agree. I totally agree. And definitely gonna get into that a little bit later because I'm totally on the same wavelength as nine there. That whenever we did get these crazy, obscure, invisible cars, Teddy Perkins solo bottle <laughs> episodes, that that could have mm -hmm. been him in uh, one of his depth sections. So, Taurian, man, did you think that this opening alluded to us being initially, initially in a dream or it, it was reality? And the reason that, you know, going back to a dream later, the reason he had the chicken sandwich, because in reality, and we all know sometimes when you watch something, when you go to sleep, that's like the first thing you dream about. But your thoughts on this opening and uh, did you? You, did you like the song that uh Ern gave to Al with the uh old Mick uh Al oh <laughs> I didn't know how they were going to respond to that but I'm glad that he like Al just kind of like played off of it and just went along with it and I found myself just kind of humming along with it too because like I felt like the nostalgia kicked that in song you know was it's fire. a kid it was, like, it was. Yeah, it, it, like, it, like it really like really kid and I like how they yeah. remixed it <laughs> yeah because I, I said that's just something I said that's just something that we I just said that's just something that we do we'll take something that's like a little nursery rhyme and on and add and our own little it. mix to it you know yeah and it's crazy because it's cra it's crazy because you'll be it's interesting how like songs like that or nursery rhymes actually get sampled in songs a lot, and you like you're oh, listening yeah. to oh, it, yeah. and it's like, oh wait, that I know, I know that song. So mm -hmm. I thought that was very, and, and it's crazy because how they did it on the spot. 
Like it right. wasn't something yeah. that was written down. It was on the spot off of the dome and they just kind of went with it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and as far as that, like the- uh, uh, sorry to cut you off, but because we know that we uh, uh, Al is, you know, recording songs in like 60 seconds flat or right. two minutes. L- Lil now, Wayne so. early 2000s. He's quick, yeah, yeah, he's going quick off of it. <laughs> Yeah, but as far as like the um the dream uh sequence goes, it's like if at first it's like when it kind of starts off, you don't know if he's in a dream or if this is reality for him at, or not. And that's just all attested, like how it was written, how the um the episode is shot. And then when it's like stuff starting to happen, it's like, is this even real? Cause it's like, mm-hmm. how can all of these scenarios just happen all at the same time, like literally like back to back to back? Like that doesn't even seem real. And then we wakes up in that tank and it's like, whoa, mind blown. Like, where are they going with this? Like it's kind of right. scary. And that goes back to what I was saying about with the theming of uh the show. Every character has their own little separate theming, but I noticed that there's always a slight horror element in every one of them. I mean, like, really think about it. Like, Van, with her episode with Mr. Chocolate, that was kind of scary in its mm-hmm. own self. Um, Al in the woods with them hogs and, you know, um, Darius with Teddy Perkins, That's that goes without saying. Right. So it's like, it literally, like, it almost like when they're by themselves, something horrific or something traumatic is going on with them somehow. And I guess that's their way of saying we're trying to do the balance of comedy and suspense at the same time. Right. Mm-hmm. And I've seen people here yeah, bringing up Westworld or Black Mirror. Tyra, your thoughts on this opening? And I guess just uh, I guess a question I have for you, if if you have done it or you plan on doing it based on this episode, going to one of those depth sets, is that something you, you, you already booked for next weekend? Hell no. (laughs) Absolutely not. I have no desire to do any of that. (laughs) Uh, I didn't know. I think at this point, none of us knew about, you know, the thick judge Judy, but I got those ethereal, like something's off and him being out of it. You know, when you watch Carrie in the very end and it's all tranquil and she's walking at the end and that hand comes out of the ground. Like it was something something unsettling about the opening. But then, you know, looking back, once we know about, you know, the sensory deprivation, him kind of being out of it already listening to the music. But I wasn't really just too much paying attention to that. I love Al and the old McDonald. Like, that's just throwback to that banter. It, it felt like season one, the way that, you know, they went into that freestyle. But I was paying attention mostly to what he was listening to. I was like, okay, we're talking about striving and lifting ourselves up as a people. And there's a Popeye's chicken commercial. I was mm. like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I know where we're going with this. And I was just uh, ready to go along for the ride. But it just, uh, something bothered me in that moment once uh, Derek was leaving and Ern asked him, you know, do you need a ride? And I was just thinking about everything that they have accumulated together, all the growth that they have had. And then we have Darius, who just still at this point really doesn't have anything of his own, which I was like, I'm like, this is so weird. Like something is off. But yeah. you just, uh, I don't know, the way that they handled this episode, it just piqued so many interests and made me pay attention to so much uh, other stuff that I never looked into just looking at Darius in the first place. <laughs> Yep, hundred percent. And yeah, we're gonna talk about the 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 kind of sadness that comes with um, Darius's character. But yeah, I love this opening. And, and again, just kind of thinking about you know, again, every time we saw him uh, in a dream, that Judge Judy was always around. Yes. So it just makes you kind of wonder if we Open immediately Judge jumped Judy. into. Yeah, I thought yeah. I think we were in a dream in the in the, the sensory deprivation from the very start of the episode. Mm-hmm. I have to agree. I have to agree. But getting back into uh, our thoughts here, be on this uh, this other side story involving Al and Ern and Van. We we get this situation. Be where we have this first owned black uh, uh, sushi restaurant in Atlanta, mm-hmm. and you know, first off the bat, be we we, we got this kind of janky situation where valet, you got to park your car by yourself and then give them the keys that sounds completely backwards <laughs> to me uh but hey i'm not a you know sushi owner but your thoughts be on this set this setup here um as well as just curious on if you had any thoughts on who was van's friend was that helped invest is it is it candace is it i said in my video maybe alexander skarsgård who lost the baby shark movie is like you know i need to invest in some black owned businesses to get back in the good graces of the folks out there but your thoughts just that banter and them getting into this uh the sushi uh, restaurant yeah man um i thought it was hilarious you know and i'm still trying to decide who the mysterious friend was that invested in the restaurant but what was funny to me is the the, ep- the beginning of the episode started out great and everybody had a great attitude the camera was panning up looking at uh looking at earn and al and they just seemed like they was in such a good mood and open 
you know, to this new establishment, just trying something out, trying something, mm -hmm. new, which I'm like that too. You know, I'm, I'm kind of the guy sometimes. And I, the funny thing is, is I was each character at different points in this scene, you know, I, mm -hmm. I was there, but yeah. I was just like, Hey, let's give it a try. And look, he got his chest up Al, uh, Al does just, you know, yeah. happy. but he's like, I, it's just funny how they started so high and, you know, every 30 seconds, a new reveal will come up of just how, much of a hole in the wall this place was and <laughs> down the other way to the bathroom and so he's like, oh, well, he's like yeah out. i mean you know okay I, this is new this, i'm just gonna try it valet where we got to park our own car okay this is a little <laughs> little, ske little sketchy but hey wait, wait, wait a minute this is a, this is an old blockbuster and they didn't even bother taking down the old signage. I mean, like that. Bro, they had do rags and right. wave caps and <laughs> candy. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. And then you got this Popeyes across the street that's just tempting them. And so yeah. that was that was funny to me, man. Um, just like the, the placement of the restaurant. It's in the old Blockbuster. It's next to a beauty supply store because you got all of the the <laughs> the the marketing on the window of the different hairstyles. And yeah. so it's just yeah. like. I, I I was laughing my ass off because I knew that this was not going to end well as it did. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, lines. Uh, I think yeah, definitely a lullaby for me, man. Put that in the in the repertoire. But your thoughts on them just kind of get into this situation, and um, I know you you we're probably on the same wavelength with when they brought up Erm talking about, uh, you know, you got to support our own man, and we my mind went right right to invest in your hood. Little call back there, uh, but your thoughts going into this sushi restaurant, and this whole setup, man. Uh, I was hopeful. I was really hopeful that it would be something, um, you know, kind of like this amazing experience. Right, like, it would yeah, like, yeah. Be like, kind of like, you know, completely forget all about Popeyes once the food came out. But wow, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would have been eyeing those the Popeyes too. But um, uh, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, I'm actually just kind of like trapped on the um, the opening, the title card. Mm, yeah, so kind of a, with because, all the different Atlanta artists. Yeah, yeah, I was actually just taking a look at that. So I'm not sure if that's um, like kind of like all the people that they've had on the show before. Do y'all think mm. so, or is uh, pull up the image here? Because I know uh, I know some um, Gucci Man and Gucci Man number one on that list, and then Migos and like you know RIP uh, take off and everything. I just thought it was kind of like an interesting list to have on there. For the last episode. Yeah, no, it definitely gave me vibes of just kind of that old school season one Atlanta of acknowledging just the, the culture of Atlanta and, and artists that come from it. Uh, here's the picture here. And but also nine too. I'm just curious, did you have any thoughts on who the uh the secret friend, not secret friend, but friend of Van was it someone from her time overseas or someone local? Oh, that's interesting because you know, someone else put her on to that, you know. Kirkwood Chocolate Studio. True. Gig, yeah. Who is this friend that be putting her oh. in these? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, but in the fact that the friend is never available or like doesn't appear, doesn't want to be part of the dinner. Right, because uh, they probably already knew it. <laughs> 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 right. Uh, but you know, I thought it was just kind of hilarious how um, they do have these interpretations of like the uh, Japanese restaurant sushi. Um, but like remixing it for that Atlanta style. So when he's all like, sup, and they <laughs> respond What's back, <laughs> What's up? I was like, yeah, that, that's <laughs> that's a nice. <laughs> so, Ria, man, what'd you feel about this uh, setup in this old blockbuster and getting into Demarcus's uh, the, restaurant, man? The fact that the blockbuster sign was still there. <laughs> <laughs> is what was getting me because i'm like those are still around first of all we know blockbuster is not you know so around so that's like the signs are still there i'm like where did y'all dig that up to do this but yeah and that would have been like a red flag right there for me it's like and you walk up in there and it's a whole sushi restaurant quote unquote and it just looked janky like you said the greetings the moist towelettes being different <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like everything i wanted to know what was the rating we saw everything in that restaurant oh, yep. except what the rating on the door was i wanted to know what rating did this establishment have because i it definitely wasn't an a and, that old sign. <laughs> and i love how the mark his uh is the logo the of the sign on the marcus the marcus the marcus five star five star 
Wow. Tyra, how it, you feeling about this? Oh, go ahead, Tyra. They, they probably gave themselves a five stars. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. Ty, uh, Tyra, how you feel about this opening here and this old blockbuster? Uh, I love the opening. Um, this uh, entire episode gave me a whole dose of self-reflection because, you know, I'm a hood connoisseur myself. So once I realized that, you know, once they got out, you know, after they had to part, I, I wasn't even worried about that. Me, you know, with my little race itself, once I heard, you know, oh, it's, you know, Japanese, hard roll sushi, I'm assuming that they're going to go in. It's going to be a whole, you know, Japanese. I thought it was going to be a whole. I was like, oh, we, I was like, uh, you know, Van always has all these friends. I wouldn't put it past her to be cool. with. I wouldn't even think about any friends. I just assumed that it would be Japanese people working in this restaurant. Yeah. And maybe but a black I owner. <laughs> I thought that the only one who was really trying to partake in the experience at first was Earn because yeah. everybody was just giving pushback. Already had that tunnel vision to that Popeye's chicken, especially Al across the street, <laughs> like history. Like I know exactly where I'm going. I don't, right. I don't care. But I had to check myself because I'm like, okay, we going in. They're gonna have this full blown Japanese experience, and I had to think about all of the restaurants I've gone to that have been in, you know, structures to where it may be a a hair salon or a beauty supply <laughs> like and we just got this japanese uh mediterranean whatever just set up right here yeah. and i've been but once once i saw like demarcus i was like oh <laughs> 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 like oh you're making assumptions about uh, assumptions about what's going to be here just based off of you know all the type of cuisine that it is but right i could admit in myself that if it was that location and it just happened to be you know a japanese owner that i would probably march my little happy ass in there but just yeah. seeing you know demarcus saying like what well, you know what you know about cooking some of this and it's just like wow we really do do that like yeah. <laughs> it was instant hesitation just because instead of you know being kung pao whatever it was democracy this is hard hard roll sushi and i was like this yeah is gonna be and it's whole... crazy too <laughs> And it's crazy too that they didn't. So. And it's crazy too how cheap it was because they couldn't even take down the blockbuster sign <laughs> and get a real Demarcus sign put up in its place. You know, with some light, so you know, yeah. you know, at night or what. Because my thing is this: like, if it's dark outside and it's nighttime and your restaurant is still open, how are you going to know if you're still open because you, you don't have know. a sign hey, that's lit up that's to tell people that you're open? Restaurants that have you know grand re reopening and they've been right. <laughs> exactly. Fine. But exactly. a lot of the times, a lot of the little shit. spots that are a little janky, like they'll have the best food and the you'll best. go anyway. The yeah. best. But just because mm, yep. of the type of cuisine that it was, and it said Demarcus instead yep. of, you know, Kung Pao, Chung Li, but it was like, right, oh, right. we are so racist. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, you I mean you just based on the sign alone, you probably be like, I'm better off getting sushi at a at a gas station or something. But uh, before we move on to Brandon and get his thoughts on this next uh, part of the episode, which is Darius going and pick up the medicine. Uh, shout out to my man Adam here, showing some love with the super chat. Um, talking about this finale is meant to be in canon uh, explanation of all the show surrealism. Every episode is a dream, but because of that, they're all based in reality in some way. Uh, example: Al has a farm, etc. Yeah, we'll definitely dive into that a little bit deeper, uh, Adam. As as Nan kind of alluded to that, yeah, it seems like to be some of the show was a dream, as we we're maybe alluding to with uh, with uh, Darius and some of its reality, but definitely a good uh, observation there, Adam. Shout out for the love. And also shout out to 175 of y'all uh, that's watching live. Uh, hit that thumbs up, share, comment, but more importantly, you see all these great people on the screen. Um, Excluding myself, uh, my man Brandon, Nan, Tyrian, as well as Tyra, definitely do some uh, a favor and show them some love by subscribing. So, B man, we're now getting into the dream portion, if we want to call it that, with our man Darius here picking up some medicine, bro. And you hear his brother, you know, well, at that point, we don't know who it is. He's picking up medicine. And we get introduced to someone that I immediately knew who it was because I used to watch that show back in the day growing up. <laughs> Cree something. And I think this is where Brandon was alluding to earlier about uh, maybe maybe a different actor in the role. But I'm curious wow, to see who he thought baby. it was. But hey, it's been a while, B. I, I can't blame you, bro. I you thought it was somebody nope. else? No, nope. you better all. When, I, when I saw the face and I heard the voice, I, I was like, I, I, knew it was, oh, I knew it was her. It's the homie. <laughs> Brandon, talk to me, B. Who do, who, do, who do we think this was when, we, when she popped up on screen? I, I got to lose all my subscribers. <laughs> oh, God. Y'all, I thought, I thought this was Rachel Dolezal. Wow. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. wow. The disrespect is real. I'm so sorry. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that Rachel Dolezal, Dolezal. Miss Transracial that, herself. That's what you're talking about. Wow. All the voice oh, acting, all the animation, all yes. that through us, Susie, yes. her, everybody throughout her career. Rugrats. That was Rachel Dolezal. Exactly. I'm, not fr- not Freddie from a different world. No. Yeah, man. That's crazy. Um, I'm sorry, y'all. I, I, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I'm, I'm embarrassed. And the thing wow. is, um, I, 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 cause I was looking, I was so confident. <laughs> like, <it> was, <laughs> <laughs> when the credits ended, I was like, "Where's her name at? Like, what's oh, going wait, on?" Oh, wait, you thought it was her the entire time? Yes, yes. Oh. Until I looked it up, and I was like, mm-hmm. "Oh, this is." Cause for one, y'all, I didn't watch a different world. For one. Oh, my show. Oh, wow. show, bro. Yeah, I know, I know, I know it's a classic, Aaron. but that's just a that's just a show that um I just didn't why I knew about it. I just didn't watch it. And so Would I was go back and watch it. Uh I've Please only seen do. clips. I, I will. I, I people have been telling me that for years. I've only seen clips online. Um, you know, but I I, I had when I was looking at her IMDB <clears> before we went on this broadcast. I was like, "Oh yeah, she is the voice actress of, of all the of everyone. All the little yeah. black characters. Her, all her the resume black is her. elite. Long. Her, yes. her right. resume is really long. And I remember it was a picture that I saw on Instagram years ago where they had her picture plus all the characters she voiced. I'm Elliot like, it's a whole, it's up. a collage. It's like she did. She voiced like well over a hundred characters. Like, yeah, that's man. crazy. Yeah. I, I I I I'm not gonna lie, man. I, y'all can rip me up in the comments. I deserve that one. No, you, you know. Good, so, you it, 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 but uh, one of the things though uh, that also resonated with me, man, is you know you're gonna go pick up medicine. That can be a very frustrating trip. Sometimes, I mean, oh, sometimes yeah. it can be convenient. You know, you <clears> in and you out, go through the drive through, but sometimes it's annoying as hell. I wish it, it's there's a video floating around right now of an older uh, white lady. Uh, mm-hmm. losing her damn mind at the pharmacy and it's funny but it's not funny uh, i could probably talk about that later but anyway the trip to the pharmacy is also very personal you know i've, yeah. I've seen people get upset at the counter people for it, saying hey brandon here's your zoloff medicine or whatever you know oh, you're not supposed love. to yeah. say that out loud that's <laughs> right, <for> right. Information. <laughs> and so it was interesting that when he goes up there you know, she's all in this business. Like, okay, you talking about? Did you say self deprivation tanks or shitting? And yeah. you know, that was a very intimate question. It's also annoying that she didn't even have the medicine uh, available. But he was like, "Hey, you, you guys sent me the notification because I've been there too. Like, your medicine is ready." Mm-hmm. And I get up there and it's like, "Oh, it's not ready." I'm like, "Mother f for you, y'all sent me the text." You know, so um, that's interesting, but. I kind of was wondering what was going on because of that, because, you know, the pharmacy is such a a, a, a private, you know, trip, a, a yeah. adventure, but they were just being so open, talking to each other. That's when he brought up the thick Judy and, and you know, all of that. And I have never done a self-preservation tank before, but, you know, I've tried uh, meditation and I th- those both can possibly have like side effects of lucid dreams and nightmares as uh Darius was going through and those are just kind of some of the things that i was thinking about uh you know besides me thinking this was miss dolezal um uh, doing this <laughs> no, uh, yeah it was um you know it, it was entertaining I, I don't know this may not be a big deal but i was kind of annoyed that the pharmacist didn't apologize uh for getting the medicine wrong i was like yeah that's rude but you know those are just my thoughts well before tossing tonight the reason to go to that point uh uh bees because i think this Personally, I think this was all. This was the dream uh, portion of 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 that episode. And, um, so I think some of that re- rooted in reality of shouting out, you know, not finding a medicine. I think that all kind of played into that moment. Uh, but now, nah, man, let us know your thoughts on. Uh, 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 one, 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 I'm sorry, one more thing. Um, because I did say that was my thoughts. It's just I I, I like that Darius was able to relate to somebody here. You know, yes. it seemed like they had yes. a lot in common mm-hmm. just with yeah. their lifestyle and ideology. It was mm-hmm. one line that she said towards the end, like. I'm in this world and I can be who I want to be or something like that. Yeah, really, yeah, yeah. That 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 stood out to me. And so 100%. I, I, I really like that. Which again goes back to why I think this was part of part of his subconscious. It's kind of his himself, kind of where he's at in life compared to our next trip of uh, London here. But nah, man, talk to us about Creed. Talk to us about this scene. What did you take away from it, man? Uh, I think it was a great addition to have her on there. Um, just because there's a lot of like different 
like subtext that you can take from that with both of their characters being so oh yeah man she was in a bunch of stuff oh, yeah. yeah her wow. resume is long almost yeah. like uh on the same tip like regina king is on too like how she's yeah. just boys acting mm -hmm. on a bunch of different stuff that i never even realized but um now you know the way that atlanta kind of like slides in these kind of uh, mental health references um they don't really like beat you over the head with it but it really makes you stop and think about like okay these characters are always going through something and that is something that they have to go through in their life it may not be completely uh in the open but yeah uh is something that we may have to consider while thinking about these characters um i want to say moving forward but i guess <laughs> looking back now um, right 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 and the fact that Darius was able to guess that this woman had uh, anxiety or Cree had anxiety um, in the past or um, kind of felt like some type of kinship with her is it, pretty great because, I, I mean, I haven't really watched A Different World all that much either, Brandon. So y'all can cook me in the comments, too. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> but um, What is going you know, on? Now this feels like a, now this feels like a dream. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, y'all could cook me. Um, but you know, even just like the reference of like a, a different world, like are we in a different world right now? Like, is that mm. part of the Darius like split subconscious thing? Um, is their kinship with the, one another reminiscent of like her I role feel. on a different world? <laughs> is Darius kind of like the uh, Chris Summers? Um, to Atlanta as Chris Summer says to. <laughs> <laughs> I stand with Brandon. Yeah. Let's go, That's Brandon. Nah. Somebody uh, got <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but yeah. Uh, another great um, thing that happened is that we get Darius's like full name, um, Eze, which is um, a Eastern Nigerian name. It means king. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I, you know, I just think that like everything is intentional on this show, um, and they kind of point that out for a reason. For what reason? I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. I, th there's definitely something there. Definitely, definitely. Tyrion, man, your thoughts on this sequence? I guess um, I might be the only one that might be thinking this was part of the dream. But Tyrion, what did you think about? Was it a dream? Was it reality? These comments. Pre, pre, uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, pre, was it all a dream, man? Your thoughts of her, uh, her cameo? Talk I am her. so glad they had her in it because I'm like literally already in tune with the episode. But then when I heard her voice, I knew it was her because she has a very distinct voice. I said, that's Cree Summer. And when they panned the camera to her and I was like, wow. I wonder what the conversation was like for Donald Glover to call her and say, I want you to be in this episode and for her to say yes and agree to it. Because this is a woman who lives her life mainly behind the camera and mm -hmm. in a, a recording studio doing voiceovers. She rarely does in front of the camera work nowadays. She, she is really spread mm. out. Like her resume is really more voiceover work. So right, for her to right. agree to do that is dope. And like someone was saying in the comment, <clears throat> um, her character on a different world, Freddie was a free spirited person. Yep. And mm -hmm. just like Darius is. So I thought that was interesting to have them come together and have this conversation. And I yeah. love that there was no like extra things to it. You didn't really have to kind of like dive completely deep into it. It was like listening to a therapist talk to a person in therapy because he was able to relate to her. And like, you know, y'all was saying, this is one of the first times where you hear Darius actually sit and relate to someone on his level. Right. Because Darius yeah, is like right, usually always right. the eyeball. So to have him talk to com and communicate with someone who could relate back to him without making him seem like he's weird or he's, you know, out there or crazy. That was a very interesting thing to see. And I thought what was dope was after he had his medicine, he's on his way out the door. And then he basically comes back. I forgot what he said to her. You have a beautiful um, thank spirit. You for sharing this. Yeah, you have yeah, a beautiful sure. spirit. And she said mm -hmm. the same thing back to him. I thought that was so... <laughs> good i thought that this whole yeah. scene for me was probably the best scene in the show that actually made me realize wow it's moments like this that makes me realize how much i'm gonna miss this show mm -hmm. i'm not even gonna lie a thug tear almost came down my face oh, just bro, in this scene you right alone. <laughs> it was so deep. It, i was so i was so wrapped in in this scene because oh. it was so it was so grounded right it wasn't a lot of extra stuff going on 
-hmm. it was just like you was just there and it was like almost like a one note scene and you just needed it for this right here because of what happened before and what was about to happen mm -hmm. well said well said tyra talk to me uh cree on the screen here giving us <laughs> blessing us with her presence your thoughts uh, about and, this and, and tyra got the freddie hair too because that's how freddie oh yeah hair in a different right. world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, oh snap Oh, oh, man. Let's get I was this, so uh, let's get this excited right to see her. Like, I kind of left the show oh, yeah, for a second because I was like, oh my God, it's Freddie. It's Freddie. Yeah. I was I was like leaving because, like uh Tari said, you you rarely see her, you know, in her full form. She's always right. I follow right. her on Instagram. I you know she's oh man, she's so dope. Mm -hmm. And just for them to pick her of all people to kind mm. of find that Kendrick spirit within Darius. Mm. If you watch a different world, mm. You too. Recommend it. <laughs> Recommend it. You will really see all the validation as to why they will pick her above uh, you know, yep. anybody to say yeah. we need to put her here. Like hundred percent, hundred percent. Freddie or just Creed. and it's like and it's not, it's almost like life imitating art with her. It's like like Freddie was just this character that she was portraying on a different world. A lot of essence of you know Freddie in general is kind of like her. She was playing herself. Mm -hmm. So just that free spirited <laughs> and me watching her just kind of being that oddball on a different world. Like you just saw so many similarities in the fact that they just saw something in each other like i i, I was with her i was like when he said like oh you're such a beautiful spirit i was mm. like all her life oh my yeah. god all her life i was <laughs> i was so excited and so so just so happy to see her and happy to see him finally like have a real moment and it, and it was so brief like i'm like man i wish we could i was so sad like the show is over we're never going to get something like this again but yeah. mm -hmm. just him picking mm -hmm. up the medication because i don't think at that point any of us knew what it was for or who it was for i was really low-key distracted by Chris summer being there and y'all know i only yeah. watched the episode once <laughs> but i didn't know i i, I figured that we were um so something just something just this entire time felt off but we didn't know but once he mentioned uh the thick judge judy and i realized that we opened with judge judy and yep. that was kind of his totem and i started thinking about inception and the dice yep. and you know the yep. spinning top and i was like is any of this real are we mm -hmm. in the inception mm -hmm. are we in the you know uh deprivation tank right now like right it would be crazy if we were and of course <laughs> we ended up being that but i just love them having that moment to share that together all of this peace and just somebody informing him that you know who you are and what's you know maybe giving you anxiety you know you can let because i think she says that she was on several things prior but you know once she realized like this is okay like this battle that you're fighting you can let that go and just let your guard down and breathe to where you maybe you know won't even need that anxiety medication and it's just like oh it's just like a, a weight lifted and it was just something he was trying to aspire to versus to you know the reminder of who he was when we leave out of the pharmacy child <laughs> <laughs> well said, well said. And I totally agree with your sentiments, Styron, and also the person in the comment that brought it up that I wouldn't be surprised if um she was playing playing that character from the show. Yeah. Uh, but this goes back into my theory. I, I literally think every time we were with Darius in this episode, it was a dream. I think this yeah. is his subconscious, mm. subconsciously speaking to your point, Tyra. He could, someone he can relate to is it's probably someone on a show like Freddie. Because yeah. if you like you said, when you watch the show, she was the oh, Darius man. of that show. That's the first um, black chick I saw. Yep. Like her and Shaza, I was like, oh, all black mm -hmm. people aren't you know <laughs> one narrative in one way. Like it was exactly it was, it was so dope. And we exactly. never, I don't think we ever saw anything like that again. Yep. And, and and even she even references in this scene that my uh my father's child, I'm like, oh, that's that's Ron's kid. Like I, I literally think that this is a a, a construct mm -hmm. in his mind right now that he mm -hmm. had Freddie having that conversation. Everything that Freddie was saying to him was relating to him, anxiety and all the different stuff he's going mm -hmm. through. So I personally think that this was a part of his dream. This is his subconscious. Oh, yeah, because you his, know Freddie was all kind of yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And oh yeah, she was she, she was very soul. animated. Yeah. She was yeah. very animated. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because like when like the later seasons came on when she, you know, went and became a lawyer and got a law degree, she toned yep. down. Yeah. So that was a different spin on her character. Mm -hmm. No, I definitely think this was I think this is a dream, y'all. I think this is in his head and this definitely. is him talking to himself uh in this moment. And let me just Freddie say being that that character. Yep. You know, I just say this right quick that mm -hmm. Lakeith Stanfield is a very good facial actor. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. he like every time, like every emotion that he can give off of his face without saying any words, like right here, it's like you, you can feel like he's like look like he's in pain. Uh -huh. Like he's in like you can oh, like really feel that he's in there because they oh. run scenes about to break me down. Oh yeah. Oh man. Oh my goodness. 
we're gonna get to it again the, the tissues was out for this episode 100 percent uh but be bringing it back and so what's going on with our trio here again al he's just ready to go van's even ready to go and earn's only one's just like oh, come on man he, like he the only one that sees he's like the, the good one. in this or trying to find the good in this uh janky sushi spot <laughs> different towels b we got freaking uh uh green or a yellow rice is probably super seasoned but too seasoned uh i mean where do you want to take it be i mean it was what it was the chicken skin sa uh, salad yeah, mind you, which was, uh, it was, yeah. goes back to our d'angelo uh peanut butter sandwich i mean where do you want to take it be it was salty but it wasn't salty enough yeah i, I really want to know a lot <laughs> uh, especially that dish that he was eating a chicken skin sa a salad like <laughs> he, he, like what did you do with the chicken did you maybe you used it for another plate on your menu or something but that was interesting also just the, the seating how they had to like go it's a jump <laughs> Jim. That was uh, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was My too funny. Had to like, yeah, like he's crawl like, yeah. over and crawl in, and he's hitting uh, the table, and it's yeah. just, it's it's just weird. And I found it hilarious that Van is the one that wanted to leave, and and uh and and Al, not Al, but Ern didn't know. He's like, wait a minute, I thought you wanted to be here, and she's like, well, I did, but <laughs> she's looking at the towel. But this is just not this not working out. You know, I don't know why um, Aaron was so gung ho on just staying and trying it out. Cause you know, I, I don't know if it was my girl and she was ready to leave and it was her idea. I would have like, hey, let's go. Yeah. You know, um, so that that was just funny and just the shots of them constantly looking out the window to see the Popeyes. Is, you know, this like, she's like, that's so why. She's like, that's why I um. <laughs> like, we can go to the window. Window. That's why I face the other way. You know, <laughs> like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Yeah, uh, yeah it, 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 it was when he kicked the table, man. That's when I that I, part I, had me cracking out. Up. Like that you know, part high. had me lying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talk to me man we get our our chef here chef kenny you know what's up uh let me know your thoughts about it man and uh would you be eating some uh chicken skin uh salads my friend well uh, you know salad, what, uh, on the stream the other day we actually um had the popeyes people were making their own chicken skin and peanut butter sandwiches <laughs> and you know what we reviewed them as a pass <laughs> it was fun but pass um but on the point of um that whole setup i think that is like actually set up like a blockbuster inside too like, yeah yeah if, if you notice they even got like a candy like rack oh which yeah i'm not sure what restaurant has like a candy rack for you to just grab like stuff the to go like boy, that. That's yeah, yeah. The markets, they're really changing the game up and i think that's like that middle part where they're making the sushi is like actually where you go and check out your the video. And <laughs> so they're really just repurposed the whole thing. I got it. Oh, um, but it, it wasn't it cute. They um, earned in van, like kind of meeting up and like, you yeah, know, man, it was, yeah, we, we rarely see that. I don't think we've ever saw that in the show, like them having just like a cute boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, how you do, because every time they would go on dates, it was kind of just like, oh, let's try to get it back and going. So it was nice to see that. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Exactly. I agree. Yeah. So it seems like they're definitely on the right page and everyone is, uh, you know, they're actually going to be moving along with that, uh, that move to L.A. Yeah. And it kind of got me wondering, like, is this like their last hurrah? Is this like the last supper for the whole gang mm. before Could they be. uh, go their separate ways? <laughs> sure. I think so. I think so. Definitely that last supper <laughs> thing for sure. I definitely thought about that. The white Hennessy. The white Hennessy. Uh, Toria, <laughs> man, your thoughts on just the the, the setup, the situation, the, the 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 food, the dishes, the entrees they're giving, man. I'm, like I said, I'm be? like I said, I'm still stuck on Al constantly hitting his foot on his leg on that table and i yeah. think what made it even funnier was because every time he did it it was a wide shot it wasn't a close shot so yeah. that made it even funnier for me because it's like every time he hit his leg on the table all you heard was a ding like like i yeah. thought that was just interesting how funny that was to me of him struggling to get into that table and it was an awkward setup like who sets up like <laughs> tables like that like to have to crawl in there, like crawl over and then crawl under. Like that was a lot. They was doing a lot. And I'm like, Al, I'm looking at Al. I said, Van and Earn, you know, they were able to get in with a little bit of ease, but Al got this boot on and he got to like lift up. <laughs> and it was a whole process for him to get in. And every time he came on to get in, 
he kept hitting his leg on the table to get into the ta uh, table. But mm. I thought that was fun. That, that whole scene was like literally the whole comedic relief for me of the entire episode. Mm. Yeah, same here. I, I loved all the stuff there. Tyra talked to me about what, what stood out to you going back to, to meeting Kenny, to the, to the food being served. <laughs> Everything, everything here was so amazing. Like I took a double meaning away from the whole Demarcus Hara sushi, like with every little small thing, because it was so many perspectives that you could have looked at it from. Because as soon as they got there, there's this. I just thought about us, you know, as a people, as a culture. There's always this pressure to support, you know, black-owned businesses. Like we, we gotta support. Like you know, we we have to support each other, even if you know it's not the best business. You know, some things is subpar. You know, it's yeah. all kind of. It's just like well, but. but we, we black like we had and it's like no we should be able to still you know support black businesses all while still getting you know quality service you know not like oh, i thought they stay open till you know oh so they open at nine or they're not back yet i guess we gotta wait till 12 they don't break right. like you know <laughs> we should still you know have expectations but i just thought about because i i love i love eating i love food yes i would have been chowing down on the chicken skin salad um i would try the, the, the poison <laughs> and everything like i tried a little, a little bit of everything yeah. but I just think about because I always love to take my kids and us to try to have, you know, different experiences, yeah. and, you know, just get engulfed in a lot of different cultures. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I was thinking about because we <clears throat> looking around like, all right, they got do rags. <laughs> they got wave grease, wave brushes, juices, hot chips, candy. And it was just like, oh, like this whole setup. It's just I was looking at it like, oh, well, they need to get out of here. This is, you know, a poor business. Mm -hmm. But once, you know, once they're scooting and getting in, I'm like, this setup is just strange. It's so crazy. But I right. thought about, you know, how many restaurants I've been into to where it was just like, you know, if it was anybody else's restaurant, would it be strange or crazy? Right. I was like, I probably right. would have went, oh, this is different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or just, you know, just going to uh, a lot of uh, Japanese restaurants in general. A lot of times they do have, you know, separate entities like stores where you can purchase different, you know, Japanese culture, merchandise, jewelry, fans, and just mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. But here you have, you know, Demarcus's and he's selling, you know, this is for, you know, my people. This is for black people. I'm not selling, you know, any Japanese fans or I'm selling, you know what I know, it's some nail polish, yep. <laughs> it's some do-rag. So it was so many things to take away to where you could look at stuff and go like, oh, this is inappropriate. This is a little ghetto. This is, this is, you know, this is not a good dining experience. Or you could take it and go, this, this would, if this was, you know, anybody else and they were presented it in, you know, in their way, in their culture. And it wasn't, you know, what's up, up, then, you know, right, <laughs> right. it would be like, oh, this, this is nice. This is so different. Oh, look, in this style, you know, they're selling different, you know, juices, you know, from their culture. This is so cool. But, you know, just on the outside looking at it initially, I was like, if they don't get up and go get yeah. some chicken <laughs> and just leave it alone, because clearly you guys are not having the best experience. But I had right. to think, like, was the food just that bad? I don't mm -hmm. know. I would have maybe tried a hot sake spit Hennessy, you know? I would have I would have tried it. Like, was it that bad? Or were y'all just, you know, just, just so yes. enticed? I want some Popeye's chicken. This isn't what I want right now. Especially right. not, you know, from who it's being served from. Mm. <laughs> I, I mean, that makes me wonder, Ty. Would you go to a a, a own a, a white owned soul food restaurant? Would you was you, would you, would you, would you <laughs> <laughs> I'll try it. Like I, I'll try it, but I just know those uh, thoughts that we have when it's you know a culture or if it's yeah. a certain type of food, but it's a certain type of person you know behind the restaurant or behind you know the chef. It's just like, or you see like I know a lot of times, especially with us and you know fried chicken, and we see you know somebody other than you know a black person. Like what you know about cooking some fried chicken? What yeah. there? So we yeah. are we tired. We tired, and it's okay. Everybody's like, tired. Z um, ain't going to that white owned. Uh, 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 soul food restaurant <laughs> uh, uh, Dorian bringing it back to you man and getting back to our boy Darius here uh, and also before we even get to that because this is the, the talk about funny this was a hilarious moment for me but shout out to all 240 y'all watching thumbs up share all that good stuff Dorian this character mm. here yeah. man had me rolling I would have loved to have gotten this character maybe popped up somewhere in one of the previous episodes because she just fits so perfectly in this world <laughs> and when you think about craziness chaotic yeah. and uh you know just everything you could think of i'm talking about the one and only london my friend london, uh, who's in here <laughs> lit as hell uh yes, drinking her vodka oh my goodness take it away Tara. i don't know if you want to talk about her she was she uh, was already take it away. 100, 
she was already on 100. Bump going from zero to 100. Look at look at that. Look at, look at that. <laughs> I mean, the face tells it all right there. Yeah. <laughs> like like when she had came up and just started was like there he is. Yeah. I was like, I was like, I was cracking up the entire time in this whole scene. And this is when I knew this had to be a dream. Yes. When the, the, this I said this definitely couldn't be real. This was not real whatsoever. At first it seemed real, but then when that what as it progressed in this scene, I said, "Oh yeah, this is definitely a dream without the shadow of a doubt because it's no way that this could actually happen. If this actually happened with somebody, that has to that's one hell of a story to tell, but I would need some undeniable proof that this actually did happen." But this whole thing right here was insane. Like the from the time she spotted him to the time she ran off <laughs> and left him with the gun, he's like, "Where are you going?" Oh shit, I got the gun. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. like that whole thing was like crazy. But yeah, uh, London, she wasn't playing with a full deck. Yeah, and now we, <laughs> Atlanta yet again has proven us they have some of the best side one off side uh obscure characters from our boy from uh can't trust these back holes to this uh obviously uh the mr chocolate i mean they just have some of the best obscure left field characters tyra talk to me about this woman who I, immediately i knew who london was when she pulled up listening to fnf and i'm oh, like okay i know exactly who she is you know <laughs> what kind of what kind of swag she bringing us but tyra from uh her talking to darius in the car <laughs> to her taking the her walking the line, taking the cop <laughs> down. I mean, where do you want to go with this character here? Well, first, I didn't know that it was like dream sequence until they hit that, you know, how many seasons of Homeboy and Out of Space. Oh I was like, God. okay. <laughs> I was thinking a little once she did, you know, if this was, you know, if I was, would I do this? And she just downed the whole bottle of vodka. But I, I loved her. I was like, man, I was looking, I was like, have she been here before? Has she been on the show? But uh, she was on Snowfall, but I knew I had seen her from somewhere, but I okay. wish that we could have saw her. She could have been a, like a recurring character because oh, she brought a whole lot like, of energy. Oh, I yes. love her. But just yeah. that, um, I was just really interested in how jarring it was and how she rolled up in the, in the energy that he just left with Cree Summer. And then you have somebody roll up and remind right. you of what you used to be on and how you used to be. be. And mm -hmm. he's like, I got tunnel vision. I'm trying to get to my sensory deprivation. You know, I don't normally smoke, you know, this early, but well, no, I think yeah. it was a lot to be said, you know, once we get into those subtle hints of mental health and we get into yeah. uh, the medication and then we leave that and we get into, you know, <laughs> how some people choose to kind of self-medicate, even though it's just seen as, you know, turn up and Liddy it's you know, whatever in the AM and we have, you know, vodka and we are smoking. And I think she says she needs a uh, small, doses or something like yeah, that like i yeah, need you know yeah. i need things in small increments you know keep me going throughout the day and i think a whole lot of us you know do that and even though uh you know she was so jarring and she was lit and all oh, like a lot of people are like this like <laughs> this is uh even you know how outlandish her character is like london is very much so grounded in reality in the way that some people choose to move early in the day like it's just like she was she was just on 10 the entire time but once uh <laughs> i didn't know this you know this was sensory deprivation just yet so once the cops stopped it i was like this is how it is like soon as you try to do right like i'm gonna take one puff <laughs> and i'm going to my sensory and it's like oh we're getting stopped and i was like okay y'all going to jail like once she got out and all, yeah. all that extra business mm -hmm. but once uh the, the walking in the shimmy i was like okay yeah something's right like they are uh something is off i, I just didn't know what and what exactly was going on then by the time they hit the little pedestrian the kid on the bike i was like okay, no, <laughs> okay. she snatched the gun it was just so much going on but just uh with how crazy it is it was so funny i love when she got out and darius was like it's like act white just just act white <laughs> And then, you know, it was another moment of me checking myself when he was like, you know, oh, y'all got this murdered out dark tent on this car. I was like, oh, we are so black. Because, Mama got a on <laughs> because I know down here, like we associate certain things with certain cars and dark tent. And they say it was a Nissan Altima. I was like, oh, bro. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know, if it's a Nissan Altima Charger or a Buick, or it just, I mean, maybe it's just a down south thing, but it's like we know what kind of energy you want with that dark tint. But your mother uh, drives a murdered out <laughs> Nissan Altima. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna but I, I, I loved it. But I think at that moment, I think that was probably the moment for everybody when it was like, okay, this is a dream. This something isn't real here. And then when we have him wake up, but I did. Um, 
noticed that, you know, she before she ran off, she said, this is all your fault. I'm like, this mm. is all going on in Darius's mind. And right. it's like kind of torn between <clears throat> what I want to be on and the energy I'm, I'm trying to have versus, you know, that old energy, that London, that, that Darius that I'm probably trying to leave behind. Listen, B, before I go to you, man, I just got to play this clip right here, bro. This girl had me dying laughing. Just her delivery, her, again, she just fits so perfectly in the world. And she just got to remember when the cops pulled up. <laughs> I'm sober. You are sober. <laughs> you are sober. B, talk to me, man. How did you feel about this character, the, how crazy it was, what we end up going with it? Your thoughts on it, man? Yeah, man, uh, she was hilarious. Um, also kind of cute, to uh, be honest with you, in uh, my opinion. Um, but what I found was interesting is when she was like, I, I always I, I always love and hate the conversation. Like, oh, where you been? You being a stranger? It's like, no, you being a stranger. I hit you up two months ago. And, oh, you know, I change my number every once in a while. And yeah. it's funny that because he said that, uh, well, go back to the old days to email or something like that. And he's like, I left those days behind. And she's like, you know what? But what I got out of this for one is it with it being the season finale, it's the end, and we're wrapping up with Darius of how he's just trying to find his peace, how he's just trying to do right by him and do what's best for him, you know. Mm -hmm. But temptation or your past always tries to come up and you know snatch you back. Because yeah, while London yeah. <clears throat> does seem like a lot of fun, does seem like a person that you definitely would want to hang out with. She doesn't seem like somebody I could be around all the time, you know, right. maybe on the weekend or once a month or something mm -hmm. like that, because, you know, she was about to get this dude caught up, you know, not yeah. saying that I'm a perfect angel over here, you know, but, you know, they was trying to keep it moving. And she's like, no, no, you know, get in my car, you know, stay down here with me. Those are just kind of the vibes I got. It's also what I was thinking of uh, immediately is like, this is why I never ride with people at like sometimes I would rather walk then ride in somebody else's car unless it's freezing cold outside or uh, raining or something like that. And I don't know how far of a walk he had with his uh, his appointment, but I was just like, oh, no, don't get in the car. This is what's going to happen. And then as soon as he got in the car, she got the alcohol, the beer mm -hmm. bottle, the, the the weed. And, you know, ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, I mean, I got to be in control of it myself. I can't be in the passenger seat. But I knew that it was a dream when she pulled the gun. Because that yeah, made I mean, no sense. I, I was impressed yeah. like he was when uh, she, you know, like talked herself out. But you just gonna grab the gun, <laughs> run over somebody, and then leave the car? Like this is this is crazy. And that was a cute little shimmy, uh, or whatever that both of y'all did. No. You know, so, oh. um, but it, it it was hilarious, man. It, it, and I, I'm glad that he woke up from that nightmare because it, it was a nightmare. Oh man. Especially, yeah, when you pick up the gun and you got the cops there. I mean, your, your life's on the line at that point. Now, I wonder how many takes it do. I wonder how many takes it took them for, to film that scene. I know they probably they probably broke character so many times. Uh, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And before we get to my man, nah, shout out to, to uh, Rich here, Darius, which is an acronym for uh, AI program, the the artificial realness inside us. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Nah, yeah, that came from uh, the Twitter account. Twitter account, they yeah, to, they were, you talk they about were wild trolling now. They us, crazy. man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay. Uh, you they think they know crazy. that like we're all theorizing about the simulation theory and just 100%. trying to, you know, yeah, they were, 100%. they were definitely getting at us. Um, but yeah, I mean, London, she, she, she's way too gangster for me, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I really could not, especially when she said email me like the underground days, like, <laughs> wow. You got to change your phone every couple of months. Like, right. nah, I'm not rolling with you like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other thing, when she says that she is not micro dosing, but macro dosing, yeah, she, she was right. macro dosing all morning, which is, I don't know what that means. That's just more than a regular dose that she's been doing all morning. So, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> No, yeah, that means dude. instead of just taking, you know, like, oh, I'm going to save everything for the end of the day. Like, no, I'm going to, you know, smoke some weed and drink or whatever else, pop whatever in small doses the entire day. No, because she said that that would be micro dosing. Mm. She said she's been macro dosing, what? which is like the <laughs> other way around. Like, that means I'm taking big doses all morning. Oh, I thought it was a good way of saying day. micro. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah that that gave me that, that she's just a bit too gangster for me so uh 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 but but i loved her um style like i don't know if this is 
like just someone from Darius's past that we just, I guess I never really considered like who Darius really be with like throughout yeah. the whole series when he's not with the fellas and he's going off into these other little adventures that we know that he does. Um, yep. I, he may just have this whole other crew that he fucks with. So I thought that was interesting. Mm. No, I agree. I agree with you, man. And speaking of interesting, Torian, uh, would would you what do you think about the uh, the the break tea room where they give you tea uh, to take a break and talk about tea in the tea room as we break out of this dream sequence? I thought it was interesting how you went from him being in this dark room in this tank in this water, and he's waking up, and you going in this this bright, quiet, small space. Like it's like what a change <clears throat> that was right there and i don't know if it was the first time or the second time when he yelled i think it was the second time when he yelled right it was the first when he woke one. up the the uh yeah the so first yelled one, yeah. in the chamber yeah, yeah. Oh, he yelled the, 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 the part the one that got him kicked out is, oh, no, is when, he, when he when he yeah, yeah so i thought you know moment. so i thought you know i thought that was interesting like how it's like he's now he's waking up from this dream and it's like hold on like where's like what's going on now? i said oh so this is where we get getting into the part about this was all a dream uh right here and him getting up out of the tank and uh, coming out, of, you know, out of the room and going into the uh, tea room and just looking around like almost like a fish out of water. That's kind of what it looked like to me mm -hmm. um, when he went into that room and how everyone was just in it so calm and so quiet. And he, it's almost like he felt out of place, even in that moment right there, which is sort of like how his reality is, too, where sometimes he feels like he's out of place, almost like he's just there in his own little world. So it's like right. even in his dreams, his reality is still there. It's like mm -hmm. no separation for him at all. Interesting. I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, as we, Tyra, I think you mentioned it earlier, and I think this is where the episode just kind of hit me uh, on another emotional level, which is when we actually go to his, his brother's house. Um, and he says, and we get the little hints of, hey, can I hug you? Yeah, yeah, man. I can't get any sicker. And He's walking in there and he has his, you know, his favorite dish from being from Nigeria and they just having a conversation. And it reminded me so much of uh, of uh, uh, Woods when uh, when Al heard his mom in the background and she's kind of fading off in the back. Uh, it's over that moment there. Like it got to me. How did it get to you? It got to me a whole lot. And a lot of yeah. stuff don't get to me. <laughs> it got to me a whole lot. I didn't know, uh, you know, those good old subscribers. They come down in the comments and connect all kind of dots. Mm -hmm. I didn't know exactly what was going on because I knew that there was some awkwardness and it seemed like there was some distance to be had because I think I, the, the man, this episode was doing a lot because once we had a whole wake up and he gets thrown out, all the tea in the tea in the tea room, it still feels unnatural and like we're under, but it's like he just woke up and got thrown out. Are we in reality? Are we, why is he jumping over a fence to go to his brother's? But it's Darius. He would probably walk. You just, you just really don't know. But it was, it was very emotional. Like, like uh, I think uh, Tyron said with the emotions on uh, Lakeith's face, as soon as his brother yeah. opened the door, like it was like on the brink of tears and, he mm -hmm. just felt like it was something that he missed that he's been away from for a long time. I didn't right. know. I think a lot of people put it together that I didn't at that moment that his family had pretty much passed away as, as well mm -hmm. as the brother. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought like maybe he was, it was either something like that or maybe he was outcast, but it was some reason or something that was going on to where he was separated from his family. And that was probably why we never got any backstory. We never right. saw, you know, anybody up into this moment. But even though, you know, uh, we got the, the thick just Judy and it's, you know, that like, oh, this is confirmation that this isn't reality. But it's like, well, if everybody's gone and, you know, they're dead and everybody's passed away and he's missing his family this much. Mm -hmm. So for Darius to say, you know, I can stay here if you if you want me to. Like, I'm like, it just sounded like him trying to, like, relinquish and let go. Yeah. And I was like, oh, uh, no. <laughs> It was it was very emotional. It's just like if you tell me like you want me here, I miss you guys this much, and I'm so lonely and out of it that I'll stay here. And it's like if they're gone, for you to stay here, that would mean you know you're you're no longer here on this earth. So that mm. was that was very emotional. It's very sad. Yeah. But uh, for him to say, because I was trying to connect it, because it was just him kind of casting off like you know no why would i want you here i don't need you here go and be with your people i yeah. wasn't sure how to take that or but i just knew that there was something some disconnect happened to where his family was no longer there and it was just yep. really sad to know that the darius that we think of as just being you know just free flowing not a care in the world and just on his own little planet he has been dealing with something really personal and tragic this entire time
on and we had no clue. We just thought, you know, it was Darius being Darius. But this entire show, he's been trying to escape from his own reality. That was it was it was sad. Yeah. <laughs> Well put, Tyra. Well put. I mean, B, do you feel the same way, man? And 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 you know, going back to just Darius, I've always wanted to know more about him and who, like now I mentioned, who he hangs out with, his family life and all this stuff. But uh, and the only time I think it was referenced to was in season three when they went to the uh, the Nigerian it's restaurant lot, with that yeah. with that white girl, and he was just like <laughs> the woman, the restaurant owner was just like, "Oh, you're you know you're from this tribe," and he's like, "Yeah, I haven't been there in a while." And it kind of that was like the only little thing that we kind of got from him. But did yeah. it get to you, B, as far as this moment here, him and his brother, and? Um, He's lost his family, man, and, and explains why he's just so uh, attached to our characters because this is his new family. Yeah, man, uh, it was it was very sad. You knew something was awry as soon as the brother opened the door um, that something was going on. And going back to season three, was that the Trinity to the Bone episode, so where oh, no. She, no. she didn't steal the idea and made the yeah no that the Trinity to the Bone was a solo. Ep- it was just those characters. That was a. Uh, okay. That episode was white fashion, I think, yeah. when uh, okay. I was going with the fashion show and all that stuff. Okay, okay, but it was it was still very sad. Um, I obviously I was kind of getting the vibe that Darius wasn't there, um, for his family or his brother at some point in time, and I'm assuming yeah. he's older. Um, <clears throat> that's just the vibe I'm getting, and you know that he kind of felt guilty, you know, for you know leaving or not being there or you know living his life um it 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 was it was sad i i I didn't expect this because you just for me at least you don't really get these vibes from darius but it just seems like he was such so different from the rest of his family or his brother you know like completely different personalities which is kind of normal uh when you think about it but as soon as you know his brother went to go get the jollof and he asked that question like hey where's mom or where's dad or how are they and his brother stepped forward and you couldn't see him anymore, but he kept right. talking. Kept I was talking. like, oh, okay, this is clearly some type of dream sequence or imagination. You know, it, I didn't, I, I realized it much more, uh, much earlier than the thick Judy popping up and then the brother stepping behind. But yeah, this was, um, I wasn't expected, but you know, I'm glad we got it about Darius. Yeah, well said, man. I totally agree with you, B. Uh, how'd you feel about it, Nan? Just kind of going to this scene here, and and just it's tragic, man. He's he's alone. He's by himself as far as uh, his blood family goes, man. Yeah, I mean, I think y'all hit it. Like it is just kind of crazy to think about Darius's um, contribution to the gang. I've always felt like, man, like what does Darius do? um (laughs) like how does he make money like what is he you know especially at the very beginning like i'm like what does this guy like actually offer to al because it seems like he's not really dealing like al's dealing or he ain't really like you know contributing to the music or whatever so it almost felt like darius has always been kind of lost in the um in their other people's ambitions and success yeah but yeah, yeah when um his brother steps forward, uh, like Brandon said, like, and he doesn't respond, but he's just like, yeah, how's mom? Okay. Like, and you can kind of just fill in the blanks of like what his brother would have said back to him. And yeah, that like already choking me up a little bit. That's a, that's a situation right there. And um, if he has to like go to these deprivation tank sessions to like kind of feel that bond with his family, Mm -hmm. that's, that's tough. That's really tough. Yeah, man. Self self uh, care is important, man. Uh, and and I love and, and listen, man. I've, I've said it for years. Darius has always been my favorite character. It's, it's just something about uh, the way that he just presents himself, and and of course, like y'all mentioned, the way that he's presents the character is just such so a fascinating mm-hmm. element. I love that we get a little bit more backstory. Um, Taria, man, your thoughts on this scene, bro? And, and did you have a uh, was this another thug tear for you, bro? Yes. And before I <clears throat> get to right my now. take about it. Uh, the picture that you put up of, of Darius' brother, you kind of look like him. Same what? face structure, the glasses, <laughs> all of that, the beard, the low cut, all of it. You kind of oh, look yeah. like looking like my little kid. <laughs> I'm that. like, are you sure that wasn't? I was like, you sure that wasn't you in the episode? But, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but nah, when I was looking at Darius pick up the picture mm-hmm. of him and his brother right there, it's like that was when it really like set in for me. Like Darius really has been going through it. But yeah. he's, you know, he has a way of masking it to make the audience like laugh at his antics. But they always say that a lot of comedians, you know, they tell funny jokes and everything like that because a lot of them have dark stories or right. they'll turn or they'll take a dark story and make it lighthearted. Mm-hmm. 
Like mm-hmm. when you be, if you like really dissect a lot of the jokes that comedians tell, some of that stuff is really dark. Like you know, if, um, but they'll tell it in a very lighthearted way. So it's almost like you know, Darius throughout the series has always been a huge comedic relief, even though every character has their own funny moments in their own way. But his was like a nonstop type of funny thing. But then when you get to this episode, and it's like it's the last episode, and it kind of hits that halt button, and it's making you realize, wow, there was a lot of layers to Darius's character that we didn't realize until the end. And it's like now you look at all the episodes prior to this and all the previous season, and now you kind of look at them in a very different way now that you see what has come full circle in particular for um, his character. And like I was saying, it is a sad one. It really is a sad one at the end of the day. Like, I don't think we've seen Darius really like this in any other no, episode. Not like so, like yeah. this one, like this one, he wasn't being the Darius that we all have come to know and see throughout this series. Like this was like, he was almost like a different, sh- like a shell of himself. Like this was a whole nother personality that we've never seen before. And what a way that we get introduced to him then in the last episode when we most likely are not going to see these characters again. Right. Well said, man. Well said. Yeah, this scene, I mean, you guys, like, not, you guys just all said it perfectly. I really don't have much more to add uh, than just it was beautifully portrayed. Uh, the, you felt that sense of sadness and, 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 um, a little bit of regret because he didn't maybe spend as much time with his uh, brother and his family as he might have um, wanted to. Obviously, you kind of look back and, went, you know, we've all might have lost someone close to us and just remember times where, like, man, I should have maybe stayed home that night or did this, did that. So, no, it's, it was a beautiful scene. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and to Ty- Tyrion's point here, let me just, just pull this picture up here just to see what he is talking about. Uh, did I make I, did, I made a cameo? Didn't even know it? Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Let me pull, <laughs> pull, 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 pull side by side um, and bring up this picture here. Can I do? No, we can't do that. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 you was the stunt double. Get it. Get it. Let me see it. You, you was the stunt double. You was the body double. Okay. All right. <laughs> they said, I'm going to get you a full bowl of Jolof, but only yeah. half. Only half. <laughs> 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 no, but no, such a beautiful scene. And, and again, well played, uh, well acted by that scene. Uh, but bringing it back and actually before we move on, yes, uh, just a quick little reminder, y'all. We got we got 270 uh, coming in, ha- hopefully having a good time, having a good laugh, just enjoying this conversation. If you are, make sure you're hitting that thumbs up, sharing this uh, stream as well as um, leave me your thoughts in the comments. We're trying to get to as many as possible and bring up uh, your thoughts and theories. Uh, but also, too, man, do me a favor and subscribe to all these great people on the screen. That would mean a lot to me, uh, and I would appreciate that. Uh, but getting back into it, uh, um, Brandon, we go back to the restaurant, and now this is where we meet Mrs. Uh, Mr. Demarcus, who definitely gave me shades of... Um, <laughs> sandwich, <nigga>. sandwich man, <laughs> uh, Mr. Alfred Wright, and a little bit of kind of purdy, uh, Teddy Perkins when uh, he's kind of trapping them in there. Uh, mm-hmm. But I mean, before we get to that dark stuff, Brandon, he was spitting some facts, man, talking about just again, black, uh, black support. Everyone came out and, and went to his restaurant to watch uh, Queen, <laughs> Queen and Slim, uh, <laughs> and, and they didn't come back since, man. Everyone said this the, the Yelp reviews was this man is serving us poison. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, 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 I mean, talk, take it away, B. Take it away. Take it away. Did, did, was he spinning facts though? Because yes. I mean, I, I yeah. see, I, well, hold on now. I, I see what he was saying, but yeah. I, I don't know. At least for me personally, my mindset has changed because, like, I, I mean, I get what you're saying, bro. But at the same, somebody left a comment early and was like, "Just because something is black, don't mean that we have to accept mediocre." No, 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 no. You know, I mean, bro, you got the, you have the. The blockbuster sign on the freaking thing, <laughs> like your presentation is trash. Now I'm not overeating at a hole in a, a hole in the wall. I will, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. I got a chicken spot down the road. You know, you five dollars, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you up. You know, right, 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 right. I'm, I'm not, I'm not above that. But at the yeah. same time, man, you are. This is a um, okay. So Tower, yes, he was speaking facts, but <laughs> it didn't necessarily apply here as well as I thought because. You cannot expect just people to jump on board with a, a a sushi restaurant. Like that's just not realistic to me. Maybe I'm telling on myself. Maybe I'm not cultured and need to get out more myself. But I just don't see black people running towards sushi, and it's not going to be anything that uh, they're excited about. Everybody in that Val, Earn, and um, 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 Van were all excited when they got there. They gave it a chance, but just. 
every 30 seconds something starts falling apart and it was just like okay i'm i'm, I'm out of here you know and so mm -hmm. um but you know he brought up the Popeyes, and you know it was funny with the yelp reviews you know saying that, okay you know this nigga here is selling poisonous fish um <laughs> but he was i mean i'm, I'm on the fence because you know, yeah I agree. I agree, and I disagree. Yeah. But what he's saying, because while where we won't frequent a black on black owned sushi restaurant, it's not like Popeyes is black owned or, or or ran, and you know we flock there, and that's dang near poisonous. But that's a whole different discussion. You know, yeah. I mean, <laughs> look, look at how people acted like a damn fool of, over the chicken salad, chicken sandwich. Yeah, that that was a I moment mean, in man. history. Yeah, yeah a moment really in black was. history. Not, 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 a, not a good one. I'm, I'm, I'm not going. You know, throw black people on the bus. I'm not going to give the whole "we got to do better" speech because I, I don't agree with that. But yeah. still, it, it, it still wasn't like it wasn't a good look. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's so. I, I don't know, man. And, and I was also like, okay, who is this guy? Like, where has he popped up before? And he just mm -hmm. seems familiar. He was really sensitive about his ish you know and he was trying to be authentic talking about hey you didn't know that you're supposed to serve the fish this way and yes. you know cut it this yeah. way and bare hands mm -hmm. and if i was a, a yellow person <clears throat> an asian person you wouldn't have any complaints no issue. Well, right 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 you know but, but at the same time your establishment is whack and and <laughs> and, and, and van and they gave it a chance though they didn't, i don't think they went in there just talking trash you know so i'm yeah. I'm, I'm back and forth with it I got you. It is. It's, I mean, so and also too. I, I don't not to nitpick, because uh, this show is obviously obscure and all that. He did say. I guess my uh, little nitpick here is he did say. I, I had to double check. Queen and Slim. He said people came out to um, come that night. Queen and Slim came out in November of uh, of 2019, and in this episode, we know that Darius' phone showed it, it was September 28th. So the film wasn't even out yet. So again, the, and that's my only critique about this scene is the, the time and of, of everything when he was referred to was a little bit off. But going back to the facts that me and Tyra, I think. Referring to as, as he's talking about, you know, uh, y'all going to Popeye's thinking that it's a black owned uh, successful business, but it's actually owned by an Italian man, uh, you know, and then this is the individual. I can't think of his name right now, but this is actually the owner of Popeye's. So when we think we're supporting, you know, uh, these fast food joints, especially like a, a Popeye's not knowing who's behind uh, the wheel. But uh, nah, man, taking us away, man. What do you think about this scene with Mr. Um, uh. Mr. Demarcus? Brilliant, <laughs> completely <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, because I mean, uh, I mean, he knows it's trash though. Because if a bunch of people come to your restaurant and then 15 minutes later y'all are empty, mm. then y'all got bigger problems than just like, oh, people need to change their frame of mind because now nah, you're, you're just trash by popular vote. Uh, right. And also, uh, the thing about the blowfish is that apparently, like when motherfuckers make blowfish, the chef <laughs> is supposed to always take that oh, first the bite. Ticket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're <clears throat> supposed to take that first bite in front of everybody. So, Good point. You yeah, know, <laughs> let's not escalate it to the point where you're not going to take a bite, but also you're going to be like, lock the doors. <laughs> like, <laughs> like hold on hold on yeah but uh, yeah I'm, I'm definitely um going to popeyes too and i don't think anybody really in the black <laughs> community is like you know when they go to popeyes it's like oh i'm supporting a black business i don't right, think right. like popeyes is on that <laughs> level We're not, no one's thinking about it on that level <laughs> you're right <laughs> Uh, Tyra, talk to us. What do you think about Mr. Uh, Demarcus is spitting facts, spitting a little bit of craziness? All facts. What you mean? <laughs> <laughs> this is all facts. I love this whole situation. Like it was something to take away from everything. I'm never gonna take away and say the dining experience was perfect because there's no way in hell I need to go to the local gas station. And the street, bathroom. Street, bathroom. Yeah, like right. how was your trip to the bathroom? It was far, nigga. Like it's not in the restaurant. This is, a, you know, there's a, a lot of shortcomings here. But it did not take away from what he said. Like, I don't think that anybody was just in a rush to just engulf in that entire experience. They wanted some Popeye's chicken. And even though you can say like, oh, we know that this is, you know, a black business. Getting into that, you know, that sensory deprivation, that advertisement. Like, if y'all go watch my video, I got the, the, the lady, you know, hey, this is Louisiana. Like, you feel like 
you know, you associate it with a black business or a black person, you know, it's New Orleans and they put the, you know, the older, the, the black lady in the commercial and they just, they, they know the market audience that they are yeah. selling it to. So even though you know who's behind it or, you know, the founder, the business, the owner, you associate, you know, that particular chicken with blackness. <laughs> yeah. even, you know, you like, you know, I know it's going to slap. Like I like, no, nah, it's, it's, it's not, it's not like that. Like I love when he was like, New Jersey, they, they went to New Jersey. Like they're right. not, you know, taking kind that of. money, divesting it back into the community like they went off married you know white women and now it's you know it's whatever but i love the uh the whole situation with the delicacy because like i said i love going out and a lot of times i i was with them i wasn't 100 percent because you know there is a tendency to over support black businesses even if the the business is so hard just because it's black and that shouldn't exist like like get your business up mm -hmm. but at the same time like you can't take away from how they were because i was like even with everything like the service was great <laughs> the service like they were very attentive the service was great and i had to think about times where i've been to like try some foreign food and the chef or whoever may have came out and said you know this is a delicacy you know when you hear delicacy you think like oh it's something special i'm getting something like this is a great opportunity but once they say like dude is back here you know rolling the sushi with his hands and the, the i'm like that's how so, like, like that. <laughs> You roll yeah, that's just you regular stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't roll yeah. sushi mm -hmm. with your bare hands, or the, the, the fish is at room temperature. So, exactly, what you are yeah. depicting as negatives, like, I'm like, this is the way that food is normally prepped. And you're thinking, like, oh, this is cross contamination. It's dirty just because, you know, it's what's up, what's up, like, just because it's us. <laughs> that means it's dirty. You're associating, associating this with being unclean. Like, I love when DeMarcus came out. He was giving all of that crazy, like you said, Teddy Perkins. I instantly went back to, you know, the bus with the whole suit and the bean tie when he told him, you know, bite this sandwich. And, you know, it was he was so hostile and mm -hmm, so mad. Mm -hmm, like, he mm -hmm. was so upset at the fact that, you know, I'm so tired of this. I can't keep anybody in here like you guys come in here you know when it's beneficial and you're feeling you know that black nationalism i want to support black businesses but as soon as i bring out you know the delicacy or the blowfish or you know some you see a black chef rolling the sushi with his hands it's dirty we're getting out of here we don't want to eat it but mm. let it have been anybody else and then even you know to the location i think what he said that the uh the finest <laughs> sushi establishment and I, I don't know if he said japan tokyo somewhere like it's saying you know a seedy area but yeah. you know i was taught that if it, you know if you build it they will come you know they'll support but just because it's just because it's me like this nigga so like i just i love the whole <laughs> like just because it's me you're just just not you know willing to support it but if it was anybody else like hey right. we might have this blockbuster sign up here but you know we might not have the funds right now to get that removed but get you know just come <laughs> by a plate and support we can get that bad boy down and get demarcus you know across the letterhead I, I'm, I'm trying to make strides but it was um it was it was a lot to be said about the fact that uh because i i think i don't i don't i can't remember exactly what al said like as soon as they arrive i think he said something like if i'm gonna low tier or if yeah, i'm gonna low ball yeah, yeah I'm gonna i'm ready to go over there yeah mm -hmm. and he had even you know he, he hadn't even ate anything yet so right it's already i, I don't think they were just in such a rush to uh get into the way well, you know everybody except for earn earn and earn try but it's like if it's subpar and it's not good even if it is a black business we should be afforded to leave but we still have to look at why you know they were in a rush to leave outside of you know the other stuff like yeah y'all still wanted some Popeye's chicken and you were willing to run over there and go support that coon chicken as he said mm -hmm. <laughs> and not you know taste it but when he said lock the door I was like that whole maniac laugh yeah. like you need some hot sauce I'm like you need oh, some maniac. hot sauce brother <laughs> everybody run everybody get the hell out of here but I loved it. I love that uh, it just really felt, you know, like a tie-in to uh, the first. The, I think that was the first episode with Ern on the bus, and you know, yeah, like it was. The sandwich. When he was yeah. talking to him, it, yeah, it was a lot of callbacks to the, yeah. first, the first season and the first episode. And I just love how they were tying everything together. But I'm like, mm -hmm. one thing can exist without the other. We could still be subpar support, support black businesses, but yeah, y'all didn't want to, you know, be in there anyway because 100%. it was cross contamination. And what's up, sub? We we needed to leave because it wasn't clean. <laughs> 100%. 100%. So, Arian, uh, before we get to you, man, shout out to uh, uh, Jotes uh, with the super chat. And then we got a, a fan of Tyra here saying, uh, Tyra Reviews, what's up? What's so, up? So, so what's up? <laughs> uh, so, but, Tyrian, man, let me get your thoughts on this, man. How do you feel about Mr. DeMarcus but, and what he was saying well, to our characters? Well, first off, kudos to the actor for uh, knowing all of that dialogue. 
that was a lot of yeah. dialogue that's that's that he had to this say monologue. and the way that he delivered it in the cadence that he spoke was like really on point so mm -hmm. i just definitely give my kudos to the actor for even um saying that and i'm looking at this picture right now and i'm looking through the blurred in the background of the uh the employee he looking like oh you better eat that them eyes is bucking like, I, I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can see right i can see right through the <laughs> but yeah in a way like you know he was saying some real things but he was doing it almost in a guilt way <laughs> to try to force them to support a business mm -hmm. that was mediocre and trying to make them feel bad if they didn't support it even though they really wanted to go and get that Popeye's chicken they That's was being <laughs> like they was foaming at the mouth and he was like I said he was like he was spitting fast but in a way of making them feel bad if they didn't support the business at the end of the day even though what he was he, serving was not good it didn't look appetizing it didn't look edible like what was that on that plate like what was that <laughs> Like them though, I was like, ew. I was like, nah, I would have like flipped that plate up and ran up out the door. Yeah. But when he said lock the door, what that reminded me of, and I don't think many people picked up on this, is that he's okay. We know that he's running a sushi, like a bar, like type of establishment. So when he said lock the doors, the first thing that came to my mind was all these incidents where a lot of black women get into it in these Asian stores and they tell them to lock the doors. Oh. And then that's when they get into it with them. Mm. So that was the, that, that came to my mind too. Yeah. When he said, lock the door. Like that literally kicked into my head when I heard that. And when yeah. he said, lock the door, I was so, I didn't expect Darius to come flying through there <laughs> like that Superman yeah. and, and, and knock Mr. DeMarcus out. I, when I tell you, I was like, literally, when he knocked them out, I flew back into my shit. <laughs> and they was like, get out, get out. And they, and they all took flight. They got up out of there, hopped in that pink Maserati, got their Popeye's chicken. And it's like, Darius saved the day. It was like, he was a superhero, superhero. in that aspect. I mean, he's doing donuts in the parking lot. And <laughs> <laughs> and driving off with the chicken in the <laughs> and got the music playing in the background. It was like <laughs> it felt like a Disney movie, like the end of a Disney movie, yeah. like at that moment right there. <laughs> it was Did y'all have any commentary on the the high school boy that was uh humping his backpack outside of the cool chicken? Cool chicken. I, Looks like I hear this is the future. Y'all going over the there future. to support this? He's scrubbing the ground, eating his chicken sandwich, probably making a TikTok. Like this, this is the future. Mm -hmm. This is you know I, what you're yeah. telling. I thought it was funny that um all of like every time they're out in public in this season, there's always someone making a TikTok. Some in the background like every single yeah. time yeah in the yeah. background mm -hmm. somewhere doing something like that so <laughs> good point. yeah definitely yeah what did, what did Al say like we don't get over there it's about this time you know all the little middle school oh, high okay. school elementary kids right. gonna get up first let's go get yeah <laughs> that like uh uncle riley there going to the mall so yeah <laughs> That was great. I love it. I love it. And again, these little, mm -hmm. these obscure characters, man, just popping up and giving us something iconic. Uh, shout out to Jay. Uh, Should have built a restaurant catered to the uh, to the neighborhood. By the way, what kind of restaurant do you guys think the raw fish people uh, should have opened? <laughs> Any thoughts on the yeah. raw fish people? Be should have opened. Um, it could have been a chicken spot, but black owned. It, that's the first yeah. option. I mean, it could be anything. You just do want to choose. He, he want to choose fish and have you a gas station bathroom. Different. I, I feel you, but you got you got to have a a, a working like I'm gonna bathroom. Have a raw, I'm gonna have a chicken spot. My competition Popeyes across the street. I'm trying to give y'all something y'all already have here. In the have 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 a clean bathroom and and, no, <laughs> and normal a bathroom. <laughs> yeah, and, and normal yeah. seating and normal seating and and you know I ain't even worried about the time, course. but he that's, can't even sit down. You know. So. Exactly. Yeah. I think they um definitely could have just done the same idea, but just you know, just do it right. Mm -hmm. Change yeah. something and about yeah. like how you do it. Yeah. I, I agree with you. The service was an impeccable. It was it was amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, that was very attentive. You know, it was a little corny and and uh, you know, not authentic, you know, the, but mm -hmm. they, they were trying, you know. So I, I'll give them that. Right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> would have been uh would have been better. If it was um, the sushi, but then actually having the movies you can buy, but like Mr. Chocolate movies, you know, <laughs> <laughs> on the okay, so like yeah, like combine them both worlds. Be like, a, we can yeah. get you some Mr. Chocolate movies, and you can enjoy some sushi. That would have been a good little spot. Yeah. for Do y'all even like sushi? 
I, I do. Yeah, I, I love sushi, sushi, actually, sushi. To be honest, I, 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 tried it. That's my place. I like tuna rolls. Yeah, yeah tuna rolls. Oh, not yeah, but, you like sushi. I, I've tried it. I've mm-hmm. tried it, and um, you know, next woman I date, if she wants to try with me again, I will, because I'm I'm always willing to try something well, new me, with somebody next new. But time, just put some hot sauce. Put on some it. hot sauce it on it. Make it, make it, it. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> Did we skip over time. this part? Um, like when Darius wakes up in the tank this um last time, and he's like. Oh, you know, 30 minutes. Like, I, oh, yeah, not I thought, even that. Just waking yeah. up, and a lot of people were like, "Did he get out?" Because he was screaming, and like, did anybody? Did he come back and open it? Is he? Did he get out? Like, I saw so many comments saying that Darius was dead, and I was like, "Oh, and I've never done so the tank people. before, but like, you're, you're not supposed over. to be able to be turned, turned over." over. Mm-hmm. He was kind of you. They were very surprised about that. Yeah, he was and in the there for 30 minutes. That... <laughs> uh, uh... How long was I asleep? Uh, 30 minutes. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, again, and I, I think this is the beauty of this show is going back on it. There's so many other things you can reference to. <laughs> it's crazy. 30 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. But wrapping up the show, starting with you, uh, B, uh, on the Maserati scene, the chicken sandwiches under the seat. To them, I think now I referred it to as the Last Supper there with all of them gathered together. And they, uh, they're they having a conversation, and Darius says, yo, you know, where'd you get the Maserati? Oh, I stole it from the valet. Um, <laughs> excuse me, you did what? Yeah, I just, you know, I stole it. I'm still, in the, I'm still in the tank. You know, this is all a dream. And their response is, no, we're really here, uh, so on and so forth. And I guess I didn't even bring up the picture here, B. Uh, was I the only one that had Googled this uh, after this episode? And, and was I the only one shocked by this results here, Brandon? Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> Just uh, I, I did not. I've never that seen that before. Photoshop. It's Photoshop. Yeah. It is. It is. But still, but still. Man, man. It, it when they showed weird, that, I know it's Photoshop. No, you know? When they showed that clip of her walking off the bench the with screen. the roll with a little sway in her hips, I yeah. was dying. <laughs> Oh man. oh man! I was like, I was like, I was like, no wonder they don't show, no wonder they don't show below a certain point whenever Judge Judy got off the bench. It's always in that robe, chambers. y'all. It's always no, in that robe. Yeah, almost had me, but once oh. I saw all of the other pictures with regular Judy, I was like, okay, yeah. it's purple shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought Judy was fine for like five minutes. You're <laughs> Judy, but B, what did you take away from this last scene? I guess I got to ask the question, B. Was it all a dream? Yes, it was all a dream. Mm-hmm. I loved it. And not, and not even if, because of the way it ended. The Popeye's biscuits and chicken under the seat of the car or the Maserati, <laughs> that, that makes it a dream for me. Like Darius would not have known to just have the chicken ready under the seat. Like, yeah, let me get four number, th- you know, four number threes or whatever. And, you know, like, yeah, I, I, I found it hilarious. Um, you know, he just, why did he run in there and punch him anyway? Like, he didn't know that there was a some mm-hmm. type of impending danger. And so uh, it was funny, and I I liked it. Oh, dude, I don't know. He has so much frustration. Demarcus, fight me, fight me, you know. But this was definitely <laughs> this was definitely a dream. My, I don't know how much of a dream it was. Whether this episode was a whole dream or the whole show itself was a dream. I still got to go back and watch the first episode of season one again. But yeah, I I, I think this was a dream. Yeah, within the dream, within the dream. Inception. Right, that's what all yeah. was. Yeah, what Cobb said. Yeah. Um, Tyra, your thoughts on this on this ending? Also, too, I just want to reference because it is just so great to see these characters happy. And look at Al, man. I mean, we we <laughs> last two weeks we've yeah, seen him. A, I've never seen him as a happy. Black boy joy, right there. <laughs> Thoughts of Matara. Oh, what did you take away from this? And was, was it a on Tuesdays. You know, that's not that I said chicken day. Oh man, <laughs> or Taco no, Tuesday. Like, Taco Tuesday. Yes, too. all of this, like everything had had been a dream like the way that i was like the way he ran in there it was so obscure for even darius like jump in my peak maserati i was like why is he talking like that yeah i knew it was a dream sequence but with uh everything that's happened and him kind of running in not knowing what's going on but kind of to be that savior i feel like he's been trying to be their savior this entire time and he thought up you know of things that could possibly save them you know from what they were dealing with in season one you know not having any money just all these concerns especially when it comes to al and Erin. i think he's just conjured up in his mind you know what what would it be like if you know we had all this money what if al became you know this really prolific rapper what if Erin was the manager like i think things have been fake from like season one on I think we've I think we've been in Darius' head this entire time. And 
I felt like it was confirmation with all of the hints at, you know, episode one, even with them just ending in the smoke. Like, when is the last time we seen them all smoke together? I think that was just, you know, strictly like season one and even uh, Al telling um, Van, you know, you you roll up like you're the one who rolls the weed. That's what she was doing uh, in the first season. But I think I think everything has been in his, which is crazy. It's like nothing was real. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think anything has been real. Like I think everything has been in his head. Of course, I think um, I think people are getting confused. I think a lot of people are like, well, we heard sirens, and they say you know he could get arrested. He stole you know the peak Maserati. But even with that, just the joy, like that uh, that that sense of you know sensation that came over his face. I felt like he saw the thick Judge Judy on TV, and I think we've been inside of his head from way back in season one and mm. I can't I haven't seen season one in a very long time I've been seeing so many uh themes running around with the I think the shepherd the the German shepherd the dog just all kind of things like it's really mm -hmm. once again something to go back and revisit and still talk about Atlanta from here on down and just you know link stuff together I was really trying to call back to see like did we ever see a thick Judge Judy or Judge Judy at all with you're gonna have to go back yeah, yeah. see if there was Judge Judy in the background <laughs> Man, with one the of, the of you know the entire four seasons outside of this one, but just uh him saying, you know, it's my dream. I think it's my dream. I think I think it's always, you know, have been. And he's just kind of conjured up just being that savior for his friends and connecting with them because he hasn't been able to connect with his own family because they aren't here anymore. Mm -hmm. I think it was all fake, personally. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh nah, man. Your thoughts on this ending and, and the dream and the exception, uh, Cobb's told him spinning on the table and not really definitively saying if it's real or not. How do how do you perceive it, man? Sure, I think you know it, it's definitely. I, I think it's definitely a dream. There's all these like little little bits to kind of like put you into that dream world. Like right mm -hmm. now, <clears throat> I'm noticing that you know Van's pants is matching like the interior of the Maserati. seat covers <laughs> and the Maserati. Uh, and again, like the ridiculousness of like Darius knowing that there's some type of danger, but he's still going to stop at Popeye's beforehand to <laughs> <laughs> grab them all their special order. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, and I don't know if y'all um, went over the uh, description of this episode or whatever it says um inception of a dream becomes into one either that or about biggie smalls <laughs> so i mean i so you know they're definitely putting us in that inception mind of thinking yeah. um and i think the inception part is not just related to this episode it's mm -hmm. kind of like okay is the surrealism of Atlanta actually coming from Darius's subconscious? Um, he right. said he like be going like once a week, so that's like every episode, you know, once a week per episode, week. Right? right? Right, like these things could be rooted in a reality, um, but then there's that twist, that dream subconsciousness, like kind of seeping in. Uh, but where does that leave Darius, right? Right, because. You know, I, I feel sad for him now because, like, it's you know, our reality. van are going. <laughs> um, it doesn't seem like uh, Al is going to be kind of like living that same life. You know, he he doesn't seem like he wants to be fucking with people on his own farm or whatever. So, mm -hmm. like, where does that actually leave Darius in that whole equation? How is he going to be moving on? Right. If he's moving on at all, if any of this is actually right. happening. <laughs> That's the question. So, Ryan, how did you perceive it, man? The dream world, reality, these characters going off on a happy ending? Yeah, I think it was definitely a dream. But like I was saying earlier, I think it's like Darius's dream is clashing almost with reality. Now, it's kind of crazy. Like, whose reality is it? Is the actual reality or is it his reality? So it's like it's a big conflict or a big struggle right there. But I want to know is... Uh, has Judge Judy seen this episode? Because I want to know what her take. I want to know what her take on this is. Like, what is her response? To she this? getting a bunch of DMs out of out of nowhere. Right. Of, uh, <laughs> she she got like, who are all these people? Uh, uh, DMing me talk about hashtag Judy Thick. What is this? They have to ask her to use her likeness, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, they probably had to. Yeah, because they yeah because they used like that was her. Like that wasn't an actor or an actress mm -hmm. playing her. That was really her episodes but yeah but what she a way to show on amazon too i wonder if the ratings her she does season, yeah, yeah she I got a new show skyrocketed in the last 24 yeah. hours 
<laughs> they probably they probably just people just probably sitting there watching the episode waiting for her to get up they and walk off the <laughs> scene. The scene get a if Judy it's actually it's is there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they like Judy that they said they, they like, like Judy that robe is too is too is too big. We need you to like get that thing <laughs> in, brought in, you know, some but um yeah. But yeah, what a way to send this um episode and this series off. It's crazy to say that, you know. That this is the last episode, and we can't say season finale. We got to say series finale, and you know that's like one of the hardest two words to say, especially when you become attached to a show, no matter how long or short the sh uh, series has been on. But like I said, this show has been one interesting roller coaster ride that I'm glad that I was able to be a part of. You know, all of that ups, downs, and everywhere in, the, in between. And you know, I think everybody, this is like a like the perfect send off. For this type of a show, I'm glad it didn't end off in like the traditional way of how a series finale would be, because I'm going to be honest, I didn't want to sit here and like, you know, be sad, you know, and seeing this show end, it ended in a way that was non traditional, but it still had a solid ending nonetheless. But in a way, when you think about it, it could possibly leave open the doors of possibility that something else can come behind it. Um, Like we said, maybe possibly, listen, if they come out with an Atlanta movie, sign me up day one like mm -hmm. i'm right there you know they do a, a atlanta movie or even some type of a spinoff series i'm just curious to see where it's going but i think that was the purpose of to leave the episode open-ended and not have like the conventional ending where nothing can come behind it so now right. it's like the possibility that something could happen it's just that it's not coming real soon so don't look or expect anything to happen. And it was so weird. You know how when we're watching the show and it always says, like I shows a little clip of what's going to come next week to see that <laughs> not pop up. And that like there, like this is this is it. Like this is like this is it right here. Yeah. And, and to, to your point, Tarina, two things you mentioned as far as Judge Judy. There's an article in Variety with Hero, the director of this episode, who actually was access and uh, as you all can see uh they did reach out to her they emailed her uh and after months they got a hold of her and she said you know by all means you know definitely she didn't as he said he probably didn't understand what they were actually asking her hashtag judy fig but then in the email <laughs> there's your favorite judge judge judy so she did give them their blessing and then also yeah, the other thing you just mentioned that's dope. Tyrion was this uh, opening up the door to more uh, episodes or what What can we do moving forward? And as you can see, the Variety uh, interviewer says the future of the show, one off, whatever the case may be. And they said they joke around that it will be Atlanta, uh, Lottie's Revenge. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I told um, you not to sing. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, but I think we'll all be open to it if, uh, you know, if it's a good idea. Right. But right yeah. now they feel like this is a good way to end the show. So yeah. we'll see. We will see. Um, but I guess before we wrap things up, just final uh, thoughts on this. I guess, Tyra, starting with you, overall thoughts of finale and overall thoughts of season four. And then we'll end on like what was our favorite episodes of this season. But mm -hmm. final thoughts of finale and just general opinion on this fourth season. I love the finale. I loved everything about it. I didn't have a problem with one thing. I think everybody's greedy and feeling like I just wanted more. Like, like of course we wanted more. I wanted a whole. I think we could have had an extra like one more season before they left. But you know, we they they're not trying to give us that. But I love the show. Like it's so bittersweet. Not about the ending because I love the ending. I love how ambiguous it is and everybody taking something away. I just really hate the fact that I have read so many comments that's just like somewhat now. Like the fact that we don't really have a lot, especially shows, you know, based with black people or just characters in general. Like we don't have many, especially ones that are this good. And now everybody's like in the comments, like, so, so what are we supposed to do now? Like, <laughs> what do we have to look forward to now? What are we going to yeah. watch now? Like, there's nothing coming on. Of course, we have the likes of, you know, BMF, uh, Snowfall and uh, Power, mm -hmm. you know, those type of things. But that's like pretty much one in the same. Like, those are all the same shows. It's rare that we have something this special. And now that it's gone, it's like we really need to get it to where we could have something like it, it shouldn't just be us like it's the end all to be all like well right. i mean we you know everybody gets one like we, we got our one i guess we're gonna wait you know another decade before we get another great show to come out like it really sucks <laughs> Yeah. But I, I love the show and I'm going to miss it a whole lot. And I'm going to miss, uh, you know, us gathering <laughs> together to, to discuss it because this was really awesome. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm with you. B, how you feel about this finale as a whole, my friend, as far as, as, far as us uh, walking through everything? And how do you feel about this fourth season overall, man? I'm very satisfied uh, with the season finale of this show, especially after being a part of this lovely conversation, this lovely broadcast. Uh, so thank you, Ellie, for having me because there was a lot of insight put out there. And like Tara said, yeah, we do want some more. You know, we don't want it to end, but I thought this ended great because it was ambiguous. We're all taking things away, but I got what I wanted. I think we all wanted to see these characters one more time together as a group. And we got exactly that. You know, all of them are successful. They're kicking back on the patio, getting high, you know, and mm -hmm. if you can end any day, any year, any month, your week that way with your loved ones, I think that's perfect. And I'm confident in the future that we will get more Atlanta, whether it's another season or it may just be some random, you know, spinoff Christmas special, one episode show or something like that. I'm pretty sure everybody will be, you know, excited to come back for that. You know, I'm, I know they're busy and they may not be able to do a whole nother season, but I'm confident that, you know, we're going to um, see them again. And I, I love this season. I liked it more than season three. They're not saying the season three was crap, but I don't know. This may be my favorite season out of the whole show. Um, I got to really think about that, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm satisfied as a fan. And I can't, and besides this show, like Ty was saying, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if you meant like any show or a black centered show, but I'm I'm just saying, I'm pretty sure something will come up to where we can all gather around. It better be. Fan. It better. So. Yeah, we'll see. And I know since you didn't watch since you didn't watch a different world. I know, right? I know. There we go. We can watch that. Uh, yeah, I hope I forgot that. about that. But I guess not. <laughs> never forget. I guess. Never forget. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Donald Glover is working on a show which is much different than this. Him and uh, Hero are working on uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith or whatever on Amazon, which they're cooking up in the lab. So obviously, a much different show. But hopefully, yeah. he can bring something new to that genre. Um, but oh, no, I know you got to Elliot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that is that a remake? Is that going to be like a remake? I'm not sure. I know uh, uh, Phoebe um, Waller Bridge, who does uh, you know Fleabag and and all that stuff. I think she was attached to it at one point. So we'll see with Mr. Yeah. Donald. Because also we know he was going to do Deadpool, but that got canceled. So we'll see what he's cooking in the lab. Uh, hopefully mm -hmm. sooner rather than later. But now I don't know you got a video that's probably going to elaborate more on your final thoughts on the on the finale and all that. But just general impressions of the finale, man, and just uh, season four as a whole. Is it kind of like Brandon number one for you so far? I loved it. Um, I think that every episode, I don't think like any episode really misses this season. Um, mm -hmm. It may be up there with like, I don't know, everything's kind of like pretty tied for number one as far as seasons go. Maybe a clear number one, maybe Robin season. Um, <clears throat> but as far as them closing out all of these kind of different threads that we had for the characters, um, that therapy episode with Earn, like that still hits, you know, mm -hmm. I think there's still a lot there. Um, and then also, I think there's still some significance to maybe elaborate on with the dreams about the hands. Um, mm. And <clears throat> what that may mean for uh, all of the characters or like the kind of context of the whole finale too. So, uh, I think like Bravo, um, I would love to get some more content from them, but as it is, man, like just an S tier, S tier show. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Tori, and did, did I get your thoughts, man, on this, this finale uh, overall and right and yeah. overall thoughts of the season? I, I enjoyed this finale. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed this season. Like I was locked in. Like when they said that season four was coming in September, right after on the cusp of us in the season three, I was like, can I wake? Can I go to sleep today and wake up tomorrow and it be September? Hmm. I was ready for um this season, but also I knew that it was the last season. So it was like, oh, please let these weeks go by slow. It's crazy. We in November and this season started in September. So it just shows you how fast time is just flying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. When it comes to the series, I really enjoy the season. The season finale was on point. This whole show is was a breath of fresh air. It was something that I think we just needed, you know, to get away from the norm from what we've been seeing on television over the years. And it's like finally we get something that's like something more grounded. It has some elements to it, but it had a little bit of something for everybody. So it wasn't like a one note series. So I think that I really did enjoy it. <laughs> but for me, but for me, RIP to the GOAT, Thomas Washington. 
<laughs> the first black CEO of Disney and the creator of a goofy movie. Probably one of the uh, uh, one of those movies that uh, I think every black kid in the nineties watched. I said, now it all makes sense. But that for me is like one of the best episodes, and it's crazy because it was an episode that didn't feature any of the any crew. of the characters. Yeah, but it was so good though. Like it was so it was so great. Like it really had us believe <laughs> that this guy was real. Like had us googling him and everything. Like that was a dope episode. I really <laughs> did enjoy it. But if I had to put another episode up there for me, as far as in the entire series go, definitely the Teddy Perkins one. That one right there, mm -hmm. they they was all the way out there. And the fact that Donald Glover had us fooled for a little bit because no one really knew it was him until after the fact. You see, there it is, the pose on the table. Icon. You, see these, right. exactly. you see these angles? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Draw this. Draw this right here. Legendary, but uh, uh, yeah, no, I agree with. And I actually, to to that point, I actually to wrap this up, I actually want to get you guys' thoughts, and I might actually do a clip out of this. Uh, which, if I do, I guess just a quick little intro. Uh, shout out to you all watching this video, watching the stream. Uh, we just talked about it for almost two hours. This episode is finale of the show, but now I want to bring it to our favorite episodes, Tyra. Of this fourth season, which I'm going to pull up a, a list here so we can have a little reference to. But I guess for you, Tyra, do you have a top three, top five, or maybe even a, a top ten or how you would place these episodes for your personal uh, rankings of season four of Atlanta? Mm -hmm. I'll pull it up here for you. So we got most Atlanta episode one, the home in episode two, the homie is a little horse born to die, mm -hmm. light skinned, work ethic, crank that killer, uh, snipe hunt, of course, the goof that's sitting next to the door, and our final mm -hmm. two, Andrew Wyeth, Andrew uh, Alvarez World, and it was all a dream. How would you place these episodes, or if you had like a top three? Every single episode was good. Like it's really hard to have a top three. Top three is definitely the goof who sat at the by the door. Like mm -hmm. that's that's in mm -hmm. there. Uh, mm -hmm. I really love the uh, work ethic. I really love that episode. <laughs> <laughs> I love everything, like that journey we went on with uh, Van. And man, the crank that killer, like that was, man, it's just it's just so many. It's, yeah. it's the the goofy episode, crank that killer, homeliest little horse, because uh, we got that therapy that session. Eddie did too. Yeah. And yes. then this last episode, like it's, it's okay, top five. <laughs> top five. <laughs> top five. It's goofy. Goofy. Um, okay. Crank that killer. Okay. Uh, work ethic, uh, okay. homeliest little horse, and the uh, series finale. Series finale. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, Brandon, no pressure. You got a top top three, top five. Oh, yeah, even, definitely, uh, definitely, 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 definitely. Clip this. Uh, my top three is episode two, the homeless, uh, the homeless little horse. Mm -hmm. Um, also light skinned, and that comes in number two and number one for me is mm -hmm. the goof who sat by the door. Nice. That's a solid list. That's a solid mm -hmm. list. Uh, nine, where you at, man? Top three, top five, top seven. How how you feeling about these episodes? Okay, so I'm gonna go with number one. That that's really interesting because yeah, like number one, the goof that sat by the door doesn't feature any of the cast. How yeah. about that? But then, um, how about work ethic as number two? Just because I love like the social commentary that they have on that one, and then. <laughs> Throwing a ringer out there, I do want to put some respect on the Alfred's World episode because yeah. just the way that it was produced, like seeing that hog, there's just like a lot of shots. I was like, how the hell did they even film this? Yeah, like, from production. It's a lot of VFX, yeah. and then like I don't know, it's not very often that that show that the show um, makes me think like, okay, how did they actually? do this and gets me so tense and hyped up and i'm a mm -hmm. simp for like the art uh literature style like there's no other show that's going to make me watch a goofy movie one weekend <laughs> and then i'm you know googling andrew wyatt and like appreciate yeah, art for the next weekend like yeah so i i just love that range yeah solid solid uh Doreen, bringing it back to you, man. Top three, top five episodes well, of this Well, time. I already gave you my number one, and that's the goof who goof, sat by yeah. the door. That's like number mm -hmm. one for me. The crank that killer was number uh, two. I still mm. got that image of Al pushing that boy through that window. <laughs> Roberto. <laughs> Roberto got that <laughs> When I tell you, I, I almost didn't get to the episode because I kept rewinding that part over and over again. That part that's for me was... Uzi's in the jacuzzi. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> bars. <laughs> bars. <laughs> oh, and um, the work ethic episode. I said, I know Tyler Perry was pissed about that. I know Donald Glover's mm-hmm. phone was ringing off the hook when he <laughs> saw that episode. But yeah, those are my top three. Top three. All right, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the extra little mile and, tr- and try to do all ten of them. But let's see. So number one, well, let me go with number ten. And this by when I'm going by number ten, this is by no means like it's bad episode. It's just it's, it's a great season. Uh, so if I were to rank them, I would say Born to Die number ten. Um, the homiest little uh, horse I enjoyed, of course, but that's number number nine. Then I'm gonna go with uh, Snipe Hunt as number eight. Uh, Light skinned as number seven. Um, then we're looking at, uh, crank that killer number six. And then now my top five would probably be the most Atlanta, uh, then Alfred's episode. And I might be that throw off my ranking. Is that that's four. So that means number three is the finale. Number two is work ethic. And number one for me is the goof that sat next to the door. I'm I think re- we say the goof who sat by the door is probably the one that yeah. won the season. Cause that's yeah. like literally in all of our top threes. And that was your number one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and again, I thought this, and, and I'll probably do a little separate video of like ranking the seasons and, favorite episodes of the entire show but that's how i'm ranking this top this this season overall and this is a top tier as as uh nine said this is a an s tier this is top tier to me as far as seasons go and i'll talk about that a little bit later as far as maybe another separate video but i'm gonna pull up some of you all's uh uh rankings here and then we'll wrap it up yeah r.i.p to blue blood definitely a legend mm-hmm. um let's see here and we got some other ones from the other season band season three was my favorite then we got some goof in the building uh the whole series was a chef's kiss i definitely agree with that so hey let us know in the chat uh and in the comment section on your favorite episodes of season four number one to ten or top three top five uh make sure to like share comment and check out all these content creators on the on the page now show them some love and support and we'll uh we'll catch you guys in the comment section but wrapping up the stream y'all starting with you uh tyra again i'm so uh so thankful for you to be able to join us for most of these streams it was always great to hear your opinions we definitely got to find another show or movie to collaborate with in the future. Maybe it'll be Marvel, because I know you love some Marvel. Uh, or DC. Maybe we can finally get some DC talk with me and Tyra eventually. But, or a horror film. I know we both in the horror. We need so. to link up for the boys. That's what we need to link up for. Oh, I yeah. Wait. Uh, I can't wait for season four. Mm. I can't wait, Tyra. Yes. But have you seen the boys yet? Stuff. Not yet. Still not yet. Not yet. Oh, you, oh, you, haven't, you haven't watched oh, one episode of the boys? World. I've, 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 seen season, I've, seen season, I've seen season one, uh, but gotcha. I haven't I haven't got to season two. Until oh, yet. you got a lot to catch oh, up. Huh? Yeah, yes. man. Yeah, <laughs> man. Well, Tyra, again, uh, taking it to you. I thank you so much. And I always love your thoughts and opinion and the energy you bring and loving what you're doing. And I, and I can't wait to talk to you again. But if you want to let the people know where you're at, where you can be found, what you got lined up for the people next. Man, it's so much. Like the paywall on my channel is popping. They put me to work. Like they have been so supportive on my channel as far as subscribers requesting. Like we have Carmen, a hip hop or a with Beyonce <laughs> coming up. Uh, I have the Love Below album coming up. I have It's Dark and Hell is Hot DMX album coming up. Interview with the Vampire, the series. Uh, somebody's paid for. Uh, it's it's just it's just so much. Like I can't even list it. But be sure to check out my Atlanta video. I'll be working hard out here for y'all. <laughs> like <laughs> check out everything. Uh, there's just there's just so much there. Like I've been I've been like exhausted because y'all know you can set out to do some editing and then you sleep. But uh, there's a, a lot of stuff, a lot of great stuff coming up this month. Like I can't even express how great everybody has been. As far as supporting and paying for content it is so dope please come check me out my handle is on the screen just come through support if you don't see something in the first row go down in the history i have done a lot of movie reviews especially throwbacks but you may find something else that interests you also so come check me out uh, and, and Tyra, uh, again, I can't thank you enough for uh, being a part of these discussions and um, just blessing us every week, whether it's a throwback, a new review, uh, just being on the platform in general. So I appreciate you. Uh, and again, we're going we're gonna to be talking again, hopefully soon. Uh, my man B, who I know you got a million and one things going on at once and always bringing the fire content. Uh, I want you to let the people know where they can find you and what they got lined up uh, over on Just My Opinion Reviews. Yeah, man. Uh, again, thanks for having me, Elliot. I really do appreciate it. And I had such a great time on this panel today. 
uh movie reviews trailer reactions movie news roundup show spoiler reviews and just to let you know guys i have a show later on today 6 30 p.m cst i'm just going to be talking about the black panther wakanda forever box office and all that good stuff right there uh that's at 6 30 and as elliot talked about earlier um i did cover a lot for black panther i had a pre-game video a fresh out of theater reaction also had my non-spoiler review and three spoilery reviews but i am going to have a part four that is going to be today at 6 30 p.m cst i already confirmed it your boy larry with today i feel like the rifle ruler of wakanda killmarker is going to come through and he is going to give us his thoughts on the black panther wakanda forever in spoiler form and so that is going to be part four so on top of me talking about whatever movies topics i have going on today uh, on my channel there will be a round four for the wakanda forever four spoilers and your boy uh, larry will be there and so make sure you uh, subscribe and check that out i would love to engage with all of you in the chat because that's uh you know a little behind the scenes myself and brandon are a part of a little uh group chat and uh just got a little hint of what uh what to expect uh with larry's thoughts so y'all gonna definitely want to check that out uh when they drop that uh bringing it to you my man nine again man i have uh i was so uh, excited to 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 um, have you on a couple weeks ago and being able to link up with you and, and join your channel a couple weeks back, man. We definitely got to link up again. And I'm so excited to see your uh, rest of your reviews that you got lined up. And of course, what you and the squad got lined up uh, for the future, man. So why don't you go ahead and let the people know where they can find you. Uh, Patreon, I know you got out there, uh, which is continuing that conversation about Atlanta. But uh, the stage is yours, man. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm actually, yeah, I'm Nine Nerd Yards. You can find my work on YouTube. I'm excited to drop the next few videos um, of Atlanta. I still got like half the season to go. And I've been writing a lot. Um, so I, I'm definitely going to be putting in all of these little um, theories and um, uh, little nuances and provide my own um, perspective to it. And uh maybe a nice little collab tyra can i say are you here um but uh i do also want to bring it to attention that like i will be interviewing um damien damien jason white he was actually on the first uh, uh the season finale he's the um chef that's like so so he'll be on the channel and he'll be definitely uh giving his experience about you know uh jiving and talking with the whole cast of atlanta so if you want to check that out make sure you subscribe to the channel um stay tuned and check me out on patreon where you can get some extra videos for one dollar per month Mm -hmm. oh, I can't get back in. <laughs> all, you can hear is, all you can hear is the clicking of the mouse. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. I got all this stuff in the background, but I uh, appreciate it. Uh, Tarian, man, again, bro, I, we've we've been in the chats for a minute, and I'm so glad I was able to have you on one of these discussions. Mm -hmm. And we definitely got to talk, because I know you're a DC fan, too, so we got to have more of these in the future, man. But why don't you let people know where they can find you and what you got lined up on your channel, man? All right, y'all can find me here on YouTube, um, Torian Rain Reloaded. Um, I actually uploaded a video today talking about um, about Jalen Rose and him having to do that mid-commercial quote-unquote apology. Uh, but tomorrow I will be discussing, um, it'll be some more Kyrie Irving uh, topics. And I will also be doing a breakdown video on this uh, woman named Sophie Rosing. I believe that's her name. I believe her name is Sophie Rosing. And she basically is a individual who goes to the University of Kentucky who basically called um, I'm not going to say it on here, but it was she called this uh, young black lady N word B word in a video. And there's like a whole bunch of to unpack uh, about that whole situation. So if y'all want to see what I have to say about that, make sure to tune in tomorrow. Yeah, that that whole situation was wild. I saw. Wow, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. You, you, you saw, saw, you saw those saw videos. The video. Yeah, that yeah. was. Uh, 
and it's like when I say it's a lot to when I say when I say it's a lot to unpack, like it was some more like I did some more digging involving mm-hmm. her, and there was a few more videos I found about her that go back like two years. Mm-hmm. So, but I'll I'll go into all of that uh tomorrow. Tomorrow, well, I'll check it out, man. Make sure y'all do the same. But but myself and and all if y'all can stay after once we live, I want to uh chat with y'all for a bit. But to myself, Tarian, Nine, uh Tyra, and B, you guys have been awesome again. I just want to thank y'all for you know, being uh, being here supporting the, the channel and these discussions. I know it's uh, the ending of an era, but we still got a lot of stuff to cover here on the channel. So make sure you're subscribed and, and doing all that fun stuff. But again, thank y'all. And uh, again, hashtag Judy is thick. And uh, hey, maybe it's all a dream. We'll catch you guys on the next. Hopefully we'll see you in your